Hello, welcome oh. back to So We're Live. We are back in the studio and uh, we're going to be playing Total War Three Kingdoms for the first ever time live. I am seeing a lot of people in chat going crazy already. Uh, please excuse our grainy uh, green screen because I don't know why, but it's fine. Um, as is classic, uh, every time we do something, one little thing will break. So look forward to that. Um, it's tradition. Let's just let's crack on our fancy light, little lower furs. Here we are. I'm Wheels, and this is Jordan. We're the content producers here in charge of this stream. We're going to be uh, showing you the first live look at Total War Three Kingdoms. Without further ado, let's crack on over to the gameplay screen Ooh. where we can see all of the Coalition Warlords here. So this is our um, this is our startup screen, of you course. Go you go through yeah, I mean, yeah. you know the Coalition. So you've got Tao Tao, oh, you've got Liu Bei, you've got Sun Jian, we've got Gong Sazan, you're An Xiao, and you're An Xu. Also got the governors here, Kong Rong, absolute boy, yeah. uh, and then the two outlaws as well. Yeah. Very, very cool characters. But today, as voted on by the community, we pit it up against each other. Yuran Xiao and Yuran Shu, half brothers, hate each other, bitterly hate each other. So they were a, a good, uh, good combination to go. But Classic the community story. have chosen Yuran Xiao. Yuran Xiao, here he is. Uh, so let's break him down. Let's break him down. Let's break him down. Let's go through. Tom, whilst you're whilst and we're doing this, by the, the way, we're not getting gameplay audio. End. If you can have a look at that for us, chat. Can you hear gameplay audio? Can you hear music? Let us know. Yeah, that would be great, actually. So Yuran Chao is a commander character, which uh, is yellow, um, yeah. earth aligned, which means that he is uh, very good at buffing up his own troops. Yeah, okay, cha chat can hear it. Just not us. That's fine. That's, that's fine. That's enough. We, we as long as chat can hear it, that's the mo yeah. most important thing. No, no, it's all <laughs> Scared cool. to touch it. It's That's all fine. Cool. It's all cool. You go, mate. You okay, go. so um, what's interesting about uh, Yuran Chao himself is that he's one of the few characters that can have non-character-led armies. Uh -huh. So yes. this is something new to Three Kingdoms is the fact that you can actually have multiple characters uh, as three generals in your army, yeah. but Yuran Chao can actually um, have a, uh, he a captain. He doesn't need characters. Yeah, like exactly. He, he captains people. And because of this, he also gets minus 50% recruitment and upkeep costs that for captain's cool. retinues, which is really, really nice. So you can have, basically, you can have a weaker captain, so you won't have the super powerful character, but you'll have very, very cheap stuff in it, which is really, really nice. Um, he also gets plus five morale um, in the battlefield, which is pretty good. He has his faction specialization, which is his lineage. So this is going to build up over time and as we increase our lineage through conquests and stuff like that. Um, it's going to allow not only for him to uh, recruit new characters in the court, mm. so normally you'd use cash, but this guy uses his lineage. Um, but we're also going to um, we're also going to use that from uh, improving our stats across the campaign. So we'll, we'll see that as we jump in. Yeah. We've got our unique units here: the Warriors of E and the uh, Defenders of Hebe. And please excuse us if we mispronounce anything. By the way. Um, and then, as I said, we've got our Captain Brett who's here. We've got this lovely um, specific building here as well, specific building chain, so we can um, increase our lineage, public order, and income from all sources, which is really nice. And we also have uh, a separate type of occupation. So when we take over a new settlement, uh, we can actually spend our lineage to have the um, faction support go way higher than it would normally, so we can rush the productiveness yep. of our uh, factions. So there we go. That. Got Wen Chu and uh, Yan Liang here as oh software changes are required uh, as our um, as our starting characters. I'm gonna be playing on hard. Um, we also want to have no advisor on because we're gonna we're gonna be your advisors for this evening, yeah. so it's fine. Um, Personal touch. That is. We will still get some tool tips, which is fine, but we won't have the uh, the audio um, advisor. Now, time of day is another little thing which is pretty cool. I don't know if anyone's noticed this yet, but um, we do actually have like a day-night cycle in 3K now. We're going to keep it on default so that we'll see that tip through. But without further ado, without actually us being able to hear it, we're going to show you the intro cinematic. So here we go. Embers rise, stark against the night. The tyrant Dong Zhuo wields the flames of destruction. Luo Yang burns. Chaos ignites as the power of the Unix is crushed. In the pyre, the hand falters. But it will not go quietly. There are those who would resist. Yuran Shao knows he has the strength to face the tyrant. Though the sleeping dragon lies, will this chaos awaken him? China is in turmoil. The great empire of the Han, stretching back ages beyond counting, 
is being devoured by corruption. All right, the so there we go. Turns, that was the interesting amount. Uh, so we're going to see a few of those as we progress through the campaign. Kind of similar to Warhammer 2, uh, which we were used to. Oh, we can hear the game. Oh, but we are doubling. That's annoying. In response, Let's go that, man. We'll go figure it out. We'll figure it out. It's fine. So um, so in the loading screens now, we've got these, um, the these sort of like update screens where they'll tell you your story so far. These will change the over time. I like this. Yeah, I like nice. I love the Intel to Word story. But here we go. Let's do it. With the corrupt thing. Here we are. Here we are. Jumping right in. Oh, the audio's gone now. <laughs> Classic as soon as Tom leaves. Geordie will sort the audio out. Don't worry about it. This is classic live streaming stuff. Oh, it's just the advisor isn't playing for some reason. Yeah. Oh, well, that's fine. It's fine. We're not going to be hearing her again. Guys, this is, of course, pre-release, so we're going to run into a couple of bugs probably at some points. Um, we've got pretty much the whole team right now going through and fixing everything we can. Um, the nature of development. Yeah, friend, the nature of development. Sure Whenever you play a game before it's come out, then you're going you're gonna to run into a couple of things. If we do jump into anything, we'll let you know if it's something that we're aware of. But yeah, obviously, we're always going to jump into a couple of bugs. So, here we go. Starting off, Lord Yuran Shao, although you led your coalition to the very gates of the tyrant, your warlords have lost their zeal and fractured. And the fight is not yet done. So this happens, um, this campaign kicks off right when the coalition has broken up. Um, so if we zoom out right now, here we are. So here is China. Let's take a look at the board. Yeah, wow, so what a beautifully large board it what is. What a delightful board it is. <laughs> so we've got, this, um, we've got this lovely little feature at the start as well. It gives you like a little... Um, an idea of where everything is. So you can see here that the uh, the child emperor here is uh, currently being uh, held by Dong Zhuo. Uh, we've got Lu Yang, who's just been burned down by the tyrant himself. Yuan Shu, my brother, who I hate. Uh, we've got the coalition um, down here as well. We've got Cao Cao and uh, we've also got Liu Bei over here. Huang Xiao, one of the yellow turban leaders. Uh, we've actually, um, we're gonna see some of the DLC units here as well, which is quite cool. Well, they're very much a part of the game from, yes. from turn one. For, for certain starts, yeah. So, th so thorn in your side. Yeah. So th like. these are one of the uh, one of the factions that you can play as if you grab the uh, the pre-order uh, bonus. Um, but we are starting in the town of E, and we need to um, complete the capture of this commandery by uh, moving in on uh, Sui Chin. So. so this is going to be a nice and easy battle, but we'll jump in so that we can show you some of the units oh, and stuff like that. Treats. Get yes. away, man! I don't even know if he's going to do it. Or not. I know, I right? It. It's supposed to me. <laughs> it's supposed to me. Hello to anyone else. That's great. It's been a while since we've done a gameplay stream, isn't it, Jordy Boy? It has been a the while. The winds of victory blow, blow in our favour. Some like trees yeah, flourish. Yeah, uh, because we did. Um, I think we, we had die. a look at the See uh, victory this Thrones, day if you care. Uh, patch, yes. and then a rally point, right? Yeah, we haven't haven't done anything since then. So uh, it's been that's quite a while. Point. Is rally point coming back sometime, or is our focus know, yeah. remain on gameplay? We'll focus on gameplay for now. Perfect. Then that's all we need to do. We're back, mate. That's yes. the point. That's the point. Obviously, you'll see uh, the wonderful Mr. Guy Mead. At some point, I imagine. Mm -hmm. Daddy Tom. Yeah. At some point, I imagine. Maybe Andy. Oh, maybe. Maybe. Andy Don't should know. be in the chat at the moment. Um, uh, yeah, actually, Andy should be in the chat somewhere. There are, there are a lot of people in the chat though, so it's going to be difficult to spot him. But here we are. So a very, a very standard battle to begin with. Nice open field, keeping it nice and simple. So here we have. Um, so we've got alliance coloring on. We should just point out. So we've got it set so that all of our friendly units are white and all of the enemy units will be in black. So that should make it nice and easy for you guys to jump in. You can, of course, have the classic um, put yourself as uh, your actual faction colors. Yes. So the Han Empire would be red, of course. But we've got it on Alliance coloring. Let us know if you want to change it. We can if you want. But here we are. So no, looking at these gorgeous flags. How are you going to take, take us through this? What are you going to break down? Units, characters. Yeah, so let's have, let's have a look at the, the units that we have here. So we've, <laughs> <laughs> so we've got the Defenders of Hebe, uh, which are very heavy spear infantry. Uh, these guys are um, one of our sort of unique uh, units as Yuan Xiao. Uh, so these guys are pretty strong. They're disciplined, which means that if their leader dies, then they won't take a morale hit. 
uh, and they have charge reflection versus mounted. So I think this is actually a slightly different rework on um, on how charges have worked before. So instead of having charge resistance, they'll actually reflect the charge damage back at the cab that charge in as long as they're um, actually braced and waiting for the for the attack. Love that. Yeah. Um, Straight away. So there we Do go. We've got some G shot. Militia. So Militia are your very bog standard units. These guys are going to be pretty naff, but also incredibly cheap. Um, so they're not going to have the highest morale. Uh, right at the front here, we've got our champion, Stand Wenchu. Uh, this guy is uh, very good at taking on enemy heroes yep. as a champion. Um, so the wood-aligned characters are very, very good for uh, initiating duels with. He's also got this cool Binding Fury ability, which is a nice big splash damage. Interesting question. Does the variation of weapons on the characters, I know you can definitely change them so they can have various things. Are they better, some better against others? In terms of yeah, so... Spear, so it's going to be better yeah. against... So, for, for example, this guy is um, equipped with spear, which means that not only is he going to have different animations of battle and stuff like that, but, yes, which are very cool, <laughs> but also um, it means that when you equip... So, for example, if we were to equip him with Dorjen, then we would uh, drop his melee toughness, basically. We would drop his ability to defend, but increase his damage output and stuff Perfect. like that. That's great. So you, yeah, so you'll see little things like that in, in the equipment. We're starting him off as he is, vanilla. Yeah. That's great. Coming into the range line up. Some very, uh, some very lightly yeah. armored archer militia at the back here. They keep it casual, you know? Yeah, keeping it casual. <laughs> and then right at the back, it's our main man himself, Yuran Shao, leader of the coalition against the Tyrant Thong Jaw. Looking ready for battle. Let's, let's kick things off. As I said, this is going to be a pretty easy battle. One nice thing that you would have noticed now is that um, formations auto uh, also fill out when you uh, drag your armies. Which really nice. So let's get some nice. Oh yeah, there it is. We're here. We're here, boys. Or you pulled off? Cinematic's moving. Yeah. Uh, the new cinematic smoother is I think so smooth. I think we've got so a little bit cinematic. on. I'll put, I'll put, I'll put a little. Oh no, 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 no,
I'm going to take these guys off the of fire at well, just to make sure they don't get friendly fire. And uh, yeah, they're actually out just destroying. Let's nice. Everyone moving in on this. Nice. Divisive. Decisive? Decisive. Device decisive. De divisively <laughs> decisive. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, we're seeing a lot of um, seeing a lot of uh, chat messages that obviously we can't read. <laughs> so apologies if we can't give you any. Uh, it's not that any I'm not looking. Answers. Yeah, if you do have any questions, by the way, we've got Streamlabs turned on. Um, I think we're gonna. I think we've set it to about 300. Is it? Yeah, it is you have a look. So 300 should get you a um, Ideally hope question. Your blade is than your it's got one specific. We're playing on hard difficulty. Tell us. Yes, so ask a question. Not saying that we can definitely answer it, but if you, uh, if you feel we can, the time I'll has get come. the answer for you. Feel the the theory the of the earth. If you can't answer it, simple refund. Keep saving it. Uh, not bad. It's fine. It's yeah, if you didn't know, then uh, basically we have a system called Stream Labs, which you can save up your loyalty points by watching the stream and get yourself some, some nice bonuses. I do love as I said, this, uh, this Sentinel is going to be able to hold quite well because his whole job is to just avoid... Oh, get floored. His whole job is just to avoid damage. So we're going to see quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of time spent taking this guy out. And you can see why he went for that duel because he was trying to make sure that he wasn't just instantly wiped out. Yes, the AI is as as to yep. take the character out of yep. the attacking their uh, units. It's smart. But of course, this is going to be inevitable now. Um, so duels will, will carry on until... Basically, this is a life or death duel. So it's better death. Um, so we can run away, but it's going to give. Basically, it's going to give a massive debuff to our units. At this point, to be fair, what we could do is we could just initiate the run, and then by that we can just charge all of our units in. Just, uh, just ruin them. If we do take one of our units, you can see that if we interrupt the duel by attacking, then it's going to give minus 25 morale to, to all of our units. It's a permanent drop as well, which is pretty nasty. Um, I'm actually going to move Grand Shell closer to the duel. Once you've got a friendly character. So, for example, we've got your Anchal here. Once you've got a friendly character in range, especially a strategist, um, you'll see that they can uh, they can give a few buffs to this round. So, um, I'm not sure if we will see it with this little bit, but uh, because your Anchal gives that uh, morale bonus to everyone around, you can see that we have units closer to it. They're going to get a little bit more. Combat, which is nice. I think one more blinding fury should finish this point. Oh, goodbye. There it is. That's the victory. Uh, I'm glad our men stood and watched that victory. Let's lay a baseline yeah. for the campaign we're about to go on. My hat is tall, which means my combat prowess <laughs> is large. It's all about the size of your hat in right? ancient look, look, look at the tail on that guy. Yeah, I know, he's, right? he's coming up, but he's he's no cool, foot high. Yeah, it's yellow. not quite your own shower. Your own shower's got that <laughs> big old stick on his head. Looking pretty big good. Old stick. This game's coming out on the 7th of March. It is indeed. So this year. Yeah, you can get the... Um, PC near you. On PC near you. You can get a, uh, a pre-purchase going now if you want to grab Yellow Turbans. Oh, great shout. Lunar Sale right now. Mm -hmm. Steam's offering £5 off any purchase above £30. Wow. So technically, £5 off 3K. Just saying. Very nice. Pre-order worth Why? it. Software changes required. Come on, Simon. We got IT in here earlier. We didn't yeah. even update our software. We had one job. Right, so we've done that. So now we can try and take this uh, E farm land down here. Rotten so we'll just move in, and with no army to defend them now, and with a pretty shoddy garrison. <laughs> we're see if we're Monster about uh, this is little ponytail fighting <laughs> up as he increases in power. I wish it would. <laughs> I wish it would. <laughs> so we can, as I said, um, we can spend our lineage here. This is going to give way more faction support than we would get from uh, from the standard occupation. We'd also get more mi military supplies as well as replenishment for our garrison and for the uh, units themselves, which is pretty nice. We're just going to go from the standard right here. So, uh, as well, a basic question, uh, faction support in itself, mm -hmm. that's actually boosting. I really like that as an ability straight off the bat. Yeah. So right now we've got faction support and it's going to be slightly lower as it's not been under our rule for very mm -hmm. long. People are getting used to it. We might have been a little bit rough going in, so it's going to take some turns yep. before they come round to us. And as we can see here, we've got some buffs. Yeah, so we're going to we can see that um, as faction support wanes, we're going to get uh, quite a few drops to the effectiveness of the town. And as we basically every turn, we're going to see that increase, and eventually it will come up to full 100% faction support. We won't see that banner anymore. 
just like in our in our town. So over here we've got our um, our next mission is to build a uh, new building in in E. So currently we've got our farmland, which is making us some food and population growth. Mm -hmm. We've also got land registry office, which is giving us a little bit of peasantry income as well as more food production. So a nice way to complement this, and we can see that all so the buildings. So we're aligned on green, pretty yeah. much. Right green now. is going to do pretty good for us. Right now, just you? It's the only one that we have right okay. now. So, so I'm going to grab the government support building. Yeah. Um, so this one's going to give us food production, uh, as well as increasing the amount of money that we'll get from that peasantry income. But not only that, once we get to rank three, we'll actually be able to split it into uh, into two. So we can choose whether or not to get more food or more or uh, or more cash. So we can either get 30% income or 75% food production, which is pretty nice. And I think the best thing to point out as well on all of these is that they're giving us a discount to military. Buildings. Yes, so which is pretty nice. Our population and our food, we can of course. Massively the yeah, so for recruit. example, we could, we could get some conscription here, which would improve the starting rank for all our recruits in the local armies by culling some of that population as we bring them to the military. And because we've got this land registry office as well, once we upgrade to the food trader, we can actually start selling some of that food off, get even more peasantry income, keep getting that cash right, exactly. inflow, good stuff. So you follow down a line, it's great. Yeah. One thing, it's another. I really like that. Simple coloring. Ooh, we've got a few... Um, a few ancillaries here. We've got a guard, which is going to improve our satisfaction and our instinct. And we've also got a wooden fish, which is going to give us resolve and satisfaction. So what I'm going to do is, let's let's have a look at our court. So, here we are. Here's the family tree. So you can see your Anshu over here, his own his own faction. Yep. Uh, we've got myself and my wife, Lady Liu. And then my heir, Yuran Tan, Yuran Shi, and Yuran Shang. So these guys are my sons. See, these two aren't quite of age yet, so they um, they won't be able to join our, uh, our armies. But Yuran Tan is actually available at the moment. <laughs> old grin. Oh, he's very happy, isn't <laughs> Loving he? Loving life. Yeah, well, you'll see that. Um, <laughs> you'll see that uh, when their satisfaction is nice and high, as this guy is, because he's the heir to our faction, so he's he's got a pretty good life. Um, well. And you can see that once we go to win two, he's he's just a bit more neutral, so he's not quite as satisfied. But we can improve that by giving him that wooden fish. We can improve his resolve. Um, it resolve like is one of their attributes, and it's going to give him even more general self, which is nice. Excellent, excellent. So obviously, with the coloring of the character. Mm -hmm. Their strongest attribute is usually the same as their color. Yep. And if we hover over that attribute at the same time, not only does it give us their main stat, but it also does something if they become an administrator, mm -hmm. which is also a kind of dual lineage there as well. Each thing yep. has a multiple. Basically, e each attribute will have a campaign effect and a battle effect, yeah, right? Perfect. So, yeah. so expertise yeah. are going to give you melee evasion, which is basically your uh, your ability to to block damage. Mm -hmm. um, which is what I would say, tanky. Exactly. But you're also going to see uh, construction costs dropped if you start administering. Or, for example, if you're the faction leader uh, and you have lots of authority, then you're going to improve the satisfaction of your generals. And in battle, you'll improve the unit morale of your residents. And really, nice. those two right there, very, very, yes. very important. Very important. Of, cannot understate how much that is worth. We also got this guard here, which is going to give slightly more satisfaction, but also increases instinct. And instinct gives damage. So having that on your champion, having a nice high score on both red and green, makes them very, very good at taking on enemy heroes. Uh, we've also got an eavesdrop here, so we can pop that on Yuran Shao. Mm -hmm. And um, if we. Oh, put that. Is it being used? There we go. Ah, whoopsie. Um, so if we equip that on him, you can see that that's going to increase our authority, which is going to give us more satisfaction in general. Way. So, all good. Um, we've also got our traits here as well, which are going to affect how we are, and with each character, we'll also see their special ability here. So, for example, um, Yuran Xiao, as I said, giving that minus 50% recruitment and upkeep cost for Captain Retinues. Uh, but if we were, for example, to have Wen Chu as our, uh, as our heir, he would give a faction-wide bonus to the defense of Spear and Chi. Stuff like that. So there we go. Looking pretty uh, looking pretty tanked up, geared up. Killed this guy in battle, secured our commandery, and we're good to end our turn. Excellent stuff. This is the wrong redemption page, isn't it? Uh, this is not the one that I can accept to refund. No, what you want to go to is, um, I think you want to be on widgets, is it? No, dashboard. Is that it? It's I'm all, sure you'll find it. It's all changed. <laughs> it's all changed. I'm going to do this for a moment. Yeah. So we've uh, succeeded our mission, building a town. Basically, we're just going through the, the sort of tutorial missions here. Um, and our next mission is to start recruiting some new units, which is good because we have quite a few enemy territories around us that we want to move into. So... As I said, we can start upgrading this. We don't have the... Ah, we're already building over here in, in E, I think, which is why we can't grab that. But we're going to start recruiting. So we'll get some more G Militia for our uh, for our champion here. 
So we'll grab those. And then I'm actually going to grab a new character to join our roster. So Shu Yu is a strategist. Um, strategists are very, very bad themselves in battle, but buff up everyone around them. So he's got a skill here which is actually going to increase the cooldown of abilities for local generals, for enemies. Mm -hmm. So basically if you've got a... Say we were in that uh, duel like we were earlier and that enemy had this guy uh, right next to him, we would see the the um, ability that I was using would not be available to us because that strategist is stopping us. Yeah, um, sure, but sure. not only that, this guy's really good at um, range units, so he's going to increase the ammunition of his retinue, but also uh, we want to see quite a few um, formations yeah. come out of this guy, So, Absolutely. which is going to be really nice for all our G militia. We're getting stuff like spear walls and things like that. So we'll grab to you. Tru well, truly, it, does, it transforms how every unit can be yeah. made. All of a sudden, we've got so many more options, and that's great. Um, and also, no, it's very early artillery yes, coming yes. into the game. This is great. nice. Rank one, you can get your trebuchets if you've got a strategist, not which is really, really good. Not saying going to be great. I'm not saying yeah. windage might not carry a few little east. Yeah, yeah. But rank one there. trebuchets are going to be pretty inaccurate, but as they get leveled up, they're going to be pretty good. Right. And because we've got a city over here, because we've got a city over here, we really need some some artillery. So, uh, so every character has their own military tab here. You can see that um, they always have the the basic unique um, unit that uh, your faction gets and then they'll have uh, units that only that kind of character can get yes. so for example um, Shuyu as I said has his trebuchets available to him but as he ranks up uh, we can get stuff like the onyx dragons which are the, the highest rank which are really good bombardment infantry we've also got heavy repeating crossbowmen repeating crossbowmen and then of course you've got your slightly higher level faction specific ones so once he reaches rank 4 he'll be able to get those defenders of heavy which is pretty good so uh, yeah lots of cool things to go from this guy so, we want to do a little bit of recruitment. I'm going to grab that um, food trader, as I said, mm -hmm. uh, which is going to give us a little bit more peasantry income. And then as we're waiting for these guys to, to replenish, we'll just end our turn and uh, move on to Hene to get that city. So, as I said, we've got these yellow turbans right next to us. So, we need to be really careful about those guys. Um, yeah, they're no joke. They well, really, I thought they would be a little, yeah, oh, it's a pushover faction, yeah. whatever, it's fine. No. They're quite thematic. No, they will slap you. Yeah, they're quite thematic because they, they do just sort of rush. Yeah. So they don't have um, very good sort of late game units, but they can no. get like relatively strong early game units yes. out very quick. Very much so. And of course, our next mission is to grab another settlement. So, perfect timing to is go it, after Is this going to close out the commander as well? Yeah. That's well, no, we've actually, we finished the... Oh, is that the, oh, it's two yeah. place. So we're now going for the next one. Perfect. And is Hene and Dong both... The next commander is such. So we want to grab. Uh, so Hene here is our um, is this sort of like river bank, Split and then holes. Dong is on the other side. So this is actually where Liu Bei starts. Yes. Of so um, he'll start where. just over here on these yeah. mountains. Interesting. So we might come from the other side actually. So yeah, if we deal from this side, yeah, probably won't get across the river. Makes sense. We've also Wait got. I think there's actually a salt mine down here as well, which is a nice bit of industry income, which is good. Perfect. So. Perfect. Well, you remember, Wheels, also, we are back on Steam after a long absence. Yes, yes, we are. So if anyone was actually wondering uh, what the game's looking like, awards and shout-outs, what's going on, we've Someone got 450 or people on Steam right now. That's the link if you wanted to go claim a fiver off and get yourself a hot pre-order of Total War Three Kingdoms. We're also on there, a little bit behind. Mm -hmm. We're not monitoring the chat on there, because you know we love it on Twitch mainly, but still, everything's working back to normal there as well. We're on Facebook too. Yeah, we are on Facebook on as well. Facebook yeah, as yeah. well, so hi to all those guys too. Sorry, carry on. I I I'll get castle. that in there. All right, so let's go after Hene. So we don't, we're not completely recovered, but I don't think they have Some many my units in Hene, as far as I'm aware. Yeah, they've just got a small army, and then they've got a little bit of a garrison here. Um, two sort of medium tier units here with the, the spear guards. Uh, we've also got some Sabre Cavalry as well and some, some actual uh, standard uh, archers and then G Infantry Captain. Mm -hmm. But I Let's think with our weight of numbers, we should be okay. Oh, absolutely. Uh, we've also got our first reform, and here, my Ooh. favorite part of the game, this yes. gorgeous tree. Here it is. All right. Oh, we got start with one? Yes, yeah. So, um, ah. so you, I think this is a new thing, actually. So, um, you're on. Basically, each each unit will, uh, each uh, campaign, sorry, will have its own starting tech. No way. It basically gives you an idea of, of, um, of good direction. things to push down. Little nudge. So just like our characters, all of the reforms are split into the different elements. So we've got water here, mainly focuses with trade agreements and uh, character experience, mm -hmm. trade influence, that kind of thing. Um, and we've got industry and commerce income from from our purple chain. 
Um, some of these are going to grab your units as well, so let's just find which one it is. So, for example, Officer and Artscrafts will grab us these uh, Sabre Infantry. It's pretty nice. Great, upgrading us to the medium yep. instead of uh, out of three. Um, our yellow chain are sort of government um, stuff, so we're going to get um, income from all sources up here, which is really nice. Uh, and this one goes all the way up to yeah. get Spice and Silk if we're in that sort of neck of the woods. <coughs> we also get public order, um, administrative positions, that kind of thing, which is nice. Corruption. Red is obviously our military change. Uh, chain, the sorry. So we're going to see stuff like uh, starting rank, military supplies, six. recruitment costs, and then right down here, green is the peasantry. So we're going to see agricultural reforms like uh, improving our population growth or the construction time for our agricultural mm -hmm, buildings mm -hmm. or even the military supplies in our land. So um, lots of nice thematic things. So because we are currently mainly green, um, I'm going to grab the resettlement incentives, uh, which means that basically we're going to get more growth. And as we increase our growth, as we increase our population, you'll see that that's actually going to increase even more our peasantry income bonus. So we're sort of specialising in peasantry income right now. I like that. That's strong. And actually, it, even though that was a, a yellow chain kind of more on the government History side for our reforms, me it still meant that it was actually boosting income from the peasantry, whereas the population reform kind of goes on a different level. Yeah. Either which way, we kind of kind of become a bit of a breadbasket. Mm -hmm. And you know, whether we're migrating or not, strong move. Yep. What I'm going to do here, actually, is I'm going to get some Sabre Militia. Um, we're a bit heavy on the spears and bows right now, so I've swapped out two of the units that Uranchal started with and grabbed a few more. Uh, a few more of those. We've got some Sabre Militia. Those buttons, yeah. instead of coming out of the units now, just moved to the top left there. Yeah. Um, another so another thing that we should probably point out is Uranchal is currently commanding the army. So if we open up... This is the detailed effects panel, which shows us every single effect that this guy's having. Um, but you can see that... Um, He's giving plus one military supplies to his army, and then because he's commanding, we're also going to get plus ten morale when defending. But if we open up Wen Chu, for example, uh, let's see if he's got any special ones. Oh, these guys don't have any, so there we go. We picked the right person to do it, so there we go. Um, but as you unlock new skills, so for example, Yuan Xiao might have uh, when commanding plus ten morale when attacking, stuff mm -hmm. like that. So, so we're going to see those. So having the, the composition of your army is important, but also the person that's actually taking control yes. is also important. Yes. It doesn't have to be your faction leader in, in charge of your army. And you can Emperor mix it up based on what you need. need. Um, so, Impossible. without further ado, think we're ready? Yeah. I think we're ready. Let's go for it. Let's take an A. Because we've got these trebuchets. Oh, they're saying a crushing defeat, but I don't I reckon mean, so. Because of our recruited units, obviously, they've come in. Our population is very low, so... Yep. Our recruitment initial is also very low, so it yeah. takes quite a few terms to replenish them up. They can be throw away somewhat. I They've mean, got we, a uh, lot of archers here. Do we prepare? We have a lot of archers and trebuchets to disable them. Yeah, so long. we're gonna have we're gonna have a lot more range. I reckon we can probably take this. We've also got um, two more melee champions in this guy. That's, they've only got a strategist on their side. The champions are gonna be really useful here in the in the early game when they're gonna be your main power force. Um, and you can also see here that we've got quite a high capture chance if we do lose the battle. Six nine percent, nice. Um, so, <laughs> so we need to be careful. If we if we do lose, then we'll be uh, pretty pretty destroyed. But it's fine. I reckon we've got it. I reckon we've got it. Let's kick it off. Um, so, guys, I have been seeing your questions, and I am submitting them to the dev team as we speak. Some of the production team, the design team, and we all the great well people that make this far. game are actually watching right now. So hopefully, we are not annoying them too to much. Uh, however, I, I will be getting answers enemies. back as and when, so I will call it out. Every when enemy that has potential strength. Uh, there was a question on specs. When will the recommended systems Let us be specs come out? For China. Uh, I haven't got an answer on that right now uh, because generally it's being worked on and optimized as we speak. There you go. Software changes are required. <laughs> Other questions have been reviewed. Oh, and this is the great conversational. Oh, great. Software changes are required. Just crash my game, which is fantastic. So we'll just do that. Um, back to the main screen. Love that. Uh, yes, if anyone did uh, ask that question, I have had a care cut. We've gone slightly shorter now. A care cut? A hair cut and a care cut. I care, I care less and hair more. That's fun. Oh, God. But it's all, um, it's, it's not a problem at all, to be fair. It's all good. Um, so the last Let's Play that we released was my very own mm -hmm. Empire Building yeah. Let's Play. Which you can I do a little self-promotion there. Yes, absolutely. Shout out to Windows 10, by the way, for crashing my game. Wh that which I nice absolutely thing. have a link to right here. So while we just get back into the swing of things, if you watch that, 
Uh, it was a classic Jordan mishmash of many, many, many complicated so things coming together in one ever splendid, really fast-paced way. Fronts, you are beset by conflict. Well, you're welcome. <laughs> you are so welcome. And before that, Will's actually done a cracking uh, play will not on Libby. Suffer over long Libby. Libby. Uh, Libby, sorry. Yeah, Libby, um, um, which was so yeah, based on characters in the Grunchy system, which we haven't, we haven't shown the Grunchy system yet, but we will. Um, so I really like that. Finite little calls to detail. Great little step through. Yeah, it was a really good look. Quantity system basically is kind of at the core of a lot of the um, the systems in the game. Essentially, it's a uh, it's like a relationship system between all your characters. Uh, unfortunately, guys are going to have to end my turn again. Sorry about that. Um, so History there. will remember me as China's savior. Um, so yeah, uh, the the quantity system shows the relationships between characters and also factions. So for example, if we look at Yuan Shao here, just as the turns we started, uh, you can see that he's got a grudge against not only Dong Zhuo because of the horrible things that he's done to the world, um, but also against Yuan Shu. They cannot stand his brother. So for example, if Yuan Shao's faction was destroyed uh, and he was to rejoin the world, because you know when a when a faction dies, the characters still persist. And, and I, that's cool. Yeah. Not necessarily because the faction's dead, does that mean they're dead? Yeah. They can live almost like the classic kind of uh, horror story trope. Right? Yeah. Because you saw them fall off a building and they were lying on the floor and you think they're dead. Yeah. Uh, nothing was confirmed there, really. Exactly. Like, that's all cool. So we can see that the reason we hate Yuan Shu is because we have very differing opinions. So, for example, Yuan Xiao values social ability, admires attractiveness and refinement. Mm -hmm. He indulges in vanity a bit, but he dislikes scarring. So if we look at Yuan Shu, we can see that his, uh, his opinions... Are, uh, are slightly shifting towards It's a so. shame we're related. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. God. So Yuan Shu here disregards kindness, is wary of ambition, unsympathetic to the debilitated and the weak. Basically, he's a bit of a knob, uh, which is why they're, they're not best friends. Uh, so we can see, for example, if we hover over some of the uh, other characters, Wang Xiao actually, and, you know, it's got the same first name there as well. Um, they're both charismatic. They both value sociability. And as well, with my wife here, we both admire refinement. Um, but you can see that if we hover over Tao Tao, um, Tao Tao's actually suspicious and wary of attractiveness. So we're going to see um, those two uh, personalities clash. And that's going to be most uh, prevalent when we enter people into an army, for example. So you can see that Wen Chu and Xu Yu have sort of similar opinions yep. to Yuan Xiao. So we're going to see them work together pretty well, which is nice. And this will strengthen, won't it, over time? So yep. the more battles we face, the more things they do together, the more that bond will grow. Mm -hmm. Nourish. Flourish. Yes. Nourish right. the flourish. <laughs> did we start the fight now? Or did we do it um, after ending a turn? I can't remember. Uh, no, I think you went straight in. I, don't th I was going to suggest maybe waiting for a, wait a, uh, a battle wait round. Turn? No, we well, don't need, we need, need battle round. First. We've got our treps. We've got our treps. It's fine. Uh, we have got treps. Yeah. All right, let's crack on. Uh, I'm going to check and see if any more questions... We would be no um, threat to you. Ooh, Wang Quang would like a non-aggression pact. Let's have a look. Of course, our brand new diplomacy system looking very, very nice. Now, non-aggression packs for Anshao are actually going to be pretty important because um, we have a very early uh, dilemma that we'll probably see, which involves Han Fu, which could spark a war between us and Gong Sun San. Once the AI sees that we're in that weak position, because we've already got like half our borders being mm -hmm. torn up, mm -hmm. they're going to jump on that. They're going to they're going to sniff that opportunity and go for us. So, having a non-aggression pact of a couple of our neighbors is probably a good thing. So let's grab this one. We've our feelings about you proved true. Uh, so we'll grab that non-aggression pact. We'll give it a chill ten turns. Yeah. So that's, that's fine. My grab one was Cao Cao as well. Actually, I wonder if we can. Uh, I don't know if we know let's his. Faction. Let's lay the diplomatic foundations now while it's on our minds. Enjoy to see you. Um, wouldn't have under, uh, oh, we've already got an on Oh, he's lovely. <laughs> Didn't even Delightful. need to. Delightful. To start the game with one. All right. I think. Rule. Yeah, I can't remember if we right. actually start the battle last time. I'll do a quick save this time, just in case uh, Windows has a little uh, joke with us. Again. There we go. Uh, let's see if you question Oh, okay. I've got a question there we answer. go. So. Uh, it was asked. Uh, As my needs are met, so too are China's. Can a player get possession of the Han Dynasty China. or the Emperor by an event or any other way? If Master yes, uh, what does what advantage does it unknown. give to the player? I'm sorry, it was, it was, you know, the, the question was reasonably well. For China. For China. Uh, life has answered for us. Yep, it's cool. And he said that usually the Emperor is moving on to the faction who captured the settlement he resided in, which is Chang'an. 
at the moment. Yeah, at the start uh, of the game, he's controlled by Dong Zhuo, um, so he starts in Chang'an, which means that the Han Empire is a vassal of Dong Zhuo, so they'll get all of that lovely income. Ooh. So look at this. Oh, wow, that looks stunning. Yeah, this is a very, uh, very picturesque and um, cinematic sunset map that we've got going on here. But yeah, so it's being with Chang'an, control Chang'an, control the Han. Uh, but in this case, uh, if for some reason uh, the AI captured the capital instead, uh, the Emperor could actually potentially flee away to the next most prestigious faction. Also, if the yellow turbans capture him and uh, get their hands on the Emperor, he abdicates immediately. Oh, interesting. So there's an answer for you. So we'll take that one in. You'll also see that um, if a few characters uh, start to proclaim themselves Emperor, basically the, the hand will finally be like, right, we're done. So uh, if you if you end up in the Three Kingdoms period, which is basically the late game, uh, where you'll have those three large um, superpowers, essentially, uh, then at that point, the Han will just become its own faction because they won't be, they won't have an emperor anymore, essentially. So what we've got here is... Ah, oh, we didn't recruit our uh, saving militia. That's fine. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. So we've got a lot of ranged, basically. Uh, we're going to have a front line of G Militia here. I'm going to let them take the brunt of the of the force um, so that they can just uh, soak up that damage. They're really cheap. Um, then we'll have a slightly more OP unit here behind them, the defenders, um, so that they can uh, avoid some of that damage. And then we'll just grab all of our archers, put them in a nice little group, and just have them sit behind. They'll move up. We've got our Trebs in the group as well. We'll put our uh, characters here in group two, and then we'll have our front line. And we've got a cat there as well, which we can move in slightly later. And then, to be honest, my, my strategist, I think, is actually just going to stay back here. Um, because we are only coming up against another enemy strategist, we won't need to worry about enemy abilities, which is basically what he's skilled up to do at the moment. So we can sit him back, make sure he doesn't take too much damage. But let's kick things off, and let's start destroying some of these walls. So I'm going to have one trebuchet on each side of this wall. That's going to hopefully do a big decent amount of damage to these guys who are currently sat on the wall defending. They're anticipating. It looks like they've, they've defended the gate. They've got a few archers up there as well. It's busy behind that wall. It is busy behind that wall. So what we want to do is just open up a nice big hole for us. So as I said, these trebuchets are rank one. They're very, very uh, low accuracy. So it might take a little while to get some hits in, but as you can see, we're starting to hit now. Starting to do a little bit of damage. Uh, somebody in chat saying, can the AI refuse jewels? They can. Um, essentially, but at what cost? <laughs> at what cost? Um, essentially, you'll only be able to hit duel with someone if they're open to it. So, if you come in and try and initiate a duel with an AI character who doesn't want a duel, then it just will it'll be grayed out and said this character is refusing duels. Show the uh, trebuchet animations. Ah, first. That's on 60% damage. I'm hoping that we can. It's my novice crews. Yeah, I'm hoping we can do enough damage to them before the uh, units fall off. Run off basically so that we can actually kill someone off with the wall collapsing. Oof, it's on 80% damage now. You can see that they're starting to move. You can see that they're about to, about to be crumbled. So a lot of damage to the floor, which is good. We have reached the wall. Running up the ground. Oh. Just getting ready for our new farmland expansion. So close. Fine. So close. That's destroyed now, so we're going to grab. So, where are you attacking right now? Let's grab you in there. Real big. So we've done, the, we've done the two side options here. So unfortunately, those units just managed to get off. We did do a little bit of destructive damage here. You can see that a couple of them just got torn up by that explosion. Um, but as we're starting to open that wall chunk up now, we can start moving our force forward. Get the other shell in there as well. Let's start moving them forward. And I'll just, I'll just, uh, I'll just walk. I'll just walk. Don't want, don't want to tire everyone out. Get that nice big charge um, saved up when we go from here. from the towers now as we move forward. We're still hitting those walls with those trebuchets. Hopefully we can destroy it before we run out of ammunition. And then we can start uh, putting some of this treb fire onto these archers so that they don't get to hit us with too many uh, too many arrows before we get into the city. But that's looking pretty weak now, 8%, 60%. The, the investment in trebuchets right now, paying off. Yes. It's fine. Put a good few misses, it's fine. Yeah, could always put them on some of these banked up units behind the wall here. Yeah, we're pretty low on ammunition, but hopefully this next volley will destroy the wall. Oh, 90%! One more volley. One more volley. We're 
start taking part from the towers and the gatehouse now as well. Uh, we're still going to have a couple of meat grinders going on, but we do have superiority in our so the the Walls crumble into the breach. Yes, miss, yes Mr. Shao, let's do it. Mr. Grand, rather. Here we go. Right, so we'll move our archers up to here. Is um, it worth getting King's missile block chance on these guys as they approach as well? That yeah, it's a fantastic idea. Let's <laughs> pop that down. Make sure they're not taking too much damage. They don't give me the big hat. For <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to send my heroes in to try and take down that strategist because he's looking pretty exposed right now. He's, he's come out to have a look, which is a bad idea if you ask me. So we're going to start charging this G-Militia free. You can see they've taken quite a lot of damage as they march up. We'll move our G-Militia in. We're going to move these guys over here just so that they're not all clumping up into one. Maybe they should be charged. They charge in. Now these guys are spear guard. They're a little bit higher rank, uh, which can make them a little bit more dangerous. I'm going to use my archers to start taking out some of theirs because they have got a lot of range units coming in. Oh, here we go, though. Here yeah, we go. All those arrows just flying down into the floor. Oh, oof. Get those a lot other spear guard round the corner. They're firing on us on our flank. These guys. There we go. Here we go. Here we go. We've got a little cap. So you can see that my champion and the Grand Shout here are going up to the thing. Hopefully we can. He, he's quite slippery. They're quite quick, the strategists, but you can see that they've got very little health. So just that archer take the hit from there, didn't he? Yeah, just that one cool. attack has taken about 20% of his health off there. So we've got a bit of a surround now. We'll get our uh, slightly tankier units here, the defensive head base, come in as well. It looks like we've got a couple of archers on this right hand side. So we've still got a tiny bit of trebuchet ammunition here. So I'm just going to try and get one shot off on those archers. You can see quite a lot of those guys with that concentrated fire from all of our archers. Taking a lot of damage and it's starting to run. Sea of arrows. Sea of arrows. So let's start firing into those guys. Um, we can see that we've got decent surrounds going on here. These guys are having a pretty bad time with it. Grand Shout, I'm just going to move into the center here so we can just start doing a little bit of splash damage onto these guys. I think. Is Tianfeng dead? I think we've managed, but we've actually killed him. Champion. Oh, no, no, he's run over the bridge. Look. So. He's actually going to pull back now. I think he realizes just how uh, just how screwed he actually was. <laughs> uh, we've got reinforcers coming in. The G infantry captain. This, this is cracking as yeah, well. A little, little inner bridge section. Real nice. Yeah, got like this nice little port that comes through. It's pretty cool. Um, so we'll bring our champion back. Now the champions are very good at taking on other heroes, but you can see that they can forget struggle dignity. a bit against standard units. So um, if we we've got a lot of archers dignity, here. Trying we to chase are down. as savage as the enemy. Make sure they don't run off. And we'll stop firing at those guys. So this is a bit of a slog here in the middle. We're moving through. We're getting there. We're still taking a lot of fire in the back. Some of those guys around the corner. Maybe pull one of those units off. Honest, I might bring my uh, my cabin now. Oh, that. It's yeah, a perfect, perfect opportunity for them to come in now. Sweepers. Let's do this. You can see those archers. Taking fire from about five other different archer units is going to probably route them pretty quick. There they are. Damage sustained. Wavering. They're off. We can start firing out here. You can see that when she was looking for uh, the Finding uh, kind of Fury, do a little bit of splash damage. Oof, nice shake on the camera there. Um, as I said, better against enemy heroes, so we're going to pull him back. Drash out also looking a little bit weak. So, so you say that, you think these guys are pretty powerful just so they can get a good charge on this yeah. Not really, look at them. they've been pretty battered as soon as they got into the heat of the fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it took a little while, a few people to get a few hits in and so on. But they took a lot of archer fire there as well, which Shut is up pretty and nasty. Die. We've got a cab coming in now, so we can start sending them out to the archers. I might send the champs after them as well. One step closer to victory. Possible. That first unit there has run out of ammunition, which is good. Let's start moving the archers in. But yeah. These melee units are definitely out of the count, I reckon. We've got a lot of corpses lying around on the breach, but you can see that they're just trying to trying to hold out, but they're completely surrounded. They completely ruined there. In come the cab, right after the archers. Get a nice big charge from there. Software changes are required. We're moving in now. Huge charge into the back. Oh, I love it when they leap. I love it when they just do that final leap into it. It's so good. Horses! They're going to get wrecked. Charge! Those guys are out of ammunition now as well, so we don't need to worry about them too much. Uh, Archer's now coming through the gate. We have actually captured the gate because we've got the superior forces here. Yeah, you see a barricade on that side as well. Yeah, so, so it's going to... could have made a defensive... Yeah, I think they basically they're forcing us to come through yeah. this tower. Um, so, because if we went around there, then we could avoid the fire. But I might just grab one of my units here. Stop 
bit of a mess over here, so let's grab, let's grab our melee units and start moving up. Look, the enemy we take up some There we go, that's those archers dead. Come after these boys now. As you can see, like I said, pretty low on health here, you're on Shao. Uh, the, on the, the cusp. Yeah. Oh. On the cusp. <laughs> Look at a fine line. The strategist has pulled back to the uh, settlement administration here. He's got a spear guard uh, forming up on the stairs. Yeah, smart. Smart. Last stand. The last hurrah. Unfortunately. In come these cab right into the back of these archers. They feel like that, and they're going to make that last stand. Oh. It's a thousand arrows. Yeah, they're not, they're not going <laughs> to They're not gonna be very happy about that last stand. That's for sure. A couple of units are actually routing here. I think they're taking a lot of damage from those towers, so I really want to get these archers uh, killed off so we can get in. The enemy units As I said, these are militia units, so they're coward. pretty weak. They can take a lot of damage. The enemy is damage. As, as they finally kill, killed over, we can see a mass route here as they see how outnumbered they are. We claim that victory. It is Pyrrhic, but it's a victory nonetheless. Is it Pyrrhic or Pyrrhic? I don't know. It's always controversy. <laughs> but yeah, it's, uh, it was uh, costly. We knew that going in, to be fair. We also did take the two extra units of Sabre Militia that we would have had before, which mm -hmm. has given us a little bit more advantage against those spears. Otherwise, fine. They played it well. A lot of angles of attack there. And the same rules still function with range. Yeah. Taking an arrow in your shield in the front is going to be a lot less damaging than taking an arrow in the side, in your side armor, or in the back, no armor. I might do one of my secure and occupied Why not? Why get a little bit of uh, faction support here. Especially since the city. Exactly, yeah. So you can see that we're already up to yellow here, 35 out of 100. So We've managed to complete that, uh, that's that mission, so we can get a little bit of lineage back. So we should probably look at the effects here. So as you can see, the first bar, um, you're not going to get much for. Lineage will fade over time. So basically, you need to keep convincing people that you're the right man for the job. But as you move up into the next section, you can see that recruitment cost and replenishment bonus that you're going to get. And top here, minus 20% recruitment cost of captain units and also plus 10% replenishment. It's pretty nice, faction-wide. It's good stuff. So now we need to reach faction rank of Duke. Duke. We've got a lot of stuff to go. Uh, we've ranked up as well. We're second marquee now, which is pretty nice. Well done, Wheels. Thank you very Strong much. showing me. With this increase in rank, China comes another step closer to breaking the chains of tyranny. Chains that will be broken by me. I must keep pushing onwards. Yes. Well said, Yuan Xiao. So, uh, next mission is to send a character on assignment. So, mm. right, let's have a little look at this. Love this, love this. Especially because we've got a full commandery. Yuan Xiao is leveled up as well. Excellent stuff. Do you want to so, first? Let's do that yeah, first. Let's do this first. So, um, we've got quite a few skills available to us here. So, um... As you might have seen from my Let's Play video here, um, different characters are going to start on different parts of the uh, of the grid here. So Yuan Xiao started quite central. As a uh, legendary commander, he's going to have a few more skills than, than other people. He might have his own um, his own special skills as well. Uh, so for example, Guan Yu, I know, has the God of War ability here, which is basically like a one-shot kill. Yes. Yeah, which is pretty amazing. One big um, big so we've got a couple of options here. We've got redeployment cost down, being fashion leader as well as replenishment up which is pretty nice um, we can increase his damage as well as giving mighty knockback and charge speed for our retinue we can get Eight melee up. armor piercing damage what are options blue or purple purple red yellow oh, we've got loads of options here this one he's not administering so this isn't a great yeah, great option yeah gonna do that I do really like the uh, the mighty knockback. That would be Charge pretty nice. Charge speed as well. Like he is on a horse, that'd be good. Would increase his instinct, yeah. which give him more damage. Yeah, that's pretty nice. But also melee armor facing damage. That's pretty nice. An attack rate and expertise. What's expertise? Again? Expertise is going to give him defense, so it can make him a little he bit tanky. He did get nice. damaged quite easily. Yeah. Yeah, I reckon we'll go show. for the zeal. Let's make him zealous. Mm -hmm. There we go. Amazing. Have we got an accessory available there? What's that? Uh, I think yeah, no, that's oh. being used by no Wenchu. So that's basically the total number in your faction. Right. Um, and then what we did we built our food trader, that? which is nice. Oh, Simon. Kill Tian Feng. Uh, yeah. We'll do uh, a quick upgrade on one of these boys. Which one gives us something better? I mean, this is going to give us more zero. income, which is pretty nice. Oh yeah, we could just straight got two up. Two grand income and no food. Let's grab some. Let's grab some food oh, then. Prestige. So yeah, that's different to lineage. No, right? prestige. Prestige is your basically your faction rank, right? So we've just reached second marquee, mm. which means that we're gonna um, unlock those assignments, which is nice. Yeah. We've also got a trade agreement open now. Oh, um, useful. As we go up to marquee and to duke, we'll unlock yeah, new stuff. Okay, excellent. Yeah, excellent. It's excellent. good stuff. 
Um, so let's do let's assignment. No Maybe a trade agreement as well if anyone saves it. Have we got butt. anything we can trade? Food, we're not making enough of. So but. we've got we've got one trade agreement available. So as we said in um Ah, so yeah, Wang Quang actually has a trade agreement available uh, as well. So oh, we it's dependent on the trade lane. I'm being eager open. to listen. That's yeah, so one. first of all, you need to share a border so that you can actually uh, reach them, or you can do it via the rivers or the sea. Then um, both factions need to have an available trade partner, right? So we've both got one available to us. This is actually worth 2.6 to this guy, so we can probably squeeze a little bit more cash out of him as well. Just get a little bit more money. Ooh, very nice. We get quite a bit. Yeah, that, that'll yeah, do nicely. That'll do. That'll do. Two hundred seventy-nine yes. gold and a trade agreement. And that was worth like three hundred to us as well. Yeah. So if we open Wang Quan, we Welcome. can see that. that yeah, three hundred fifty-six. Yeah, that's nothing to sniff at. So to affect that, you can see trade three five six. Um, we can actually increase. Oh, wrong one. No, we want to fortune. Yeah. So we could grab technologies and there's certain uh, other things as well, yeah. which increase our trade influence. So basically, the more trade influence that you have in comparison to the other uh, person you're trading with means that you'll get more cash out of them because you're going to benefit more from the trade deal, essentially. So one thing that Kong Rong, for example, who starts up here, is really good at is that he can extort other factions through trade, which will not only give him a trade agreement, but will also increase his trade influence of each one, which is pretty nice. Interesting. Okay, and so... And then assignment was the last thing we need to do. Yeah, so we're, we're making 390 out of Henne. And we're making 506 out of Yi. So let's have a look at our available assignments. So we have Yan Liang here, who can uh, reduce our mustering terms or increase our replenishment. Mm -hmm. Or my wife and my heir have income from peasantry, <laughs> which is, of course, <laughs> our main income. Useful. Plus 50%. So assignments, Useful. essentially... When you use an assignment, you're sending one of your characters out on a mission. So um, this will decrease their um, lack of purpose, which you can see here. Mm -hmm. So, uh, And that's a good point, just on its own. Are they unsatisfied? You don't need yep. to bury a load of points and followers into them. Mm -hmm. Just give them something to do. Yeah. So Yan Liang here has minus 10 to his satisfaction because he has a lack of purpose. I don't want to use his assignment, so um, these guys are actually pretty happy. So not going to benefit from that, but we are going to get plus 50% peasantry income, which is not to be sniffed at. So we're going to grab that. It's going to take one turn for them to get there, and then once they're there, we're going to, we're going to see that increase in income. So we're going to remember nice. 2490. Next time, that should be bigger. Mm -hmm. Maybe our trade will come in as well on top of that. There's a few people asking if the map's big, by the way. So we started over here. I think the yeah. bottom there is Taiwan, right? Yeah, so this this is... Uh, so we're going to see Swinjian over here. We've got Dom Dwar over here. Like, there's there's a lot it's of land. Big. There is a lot of land. South 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 over here. There's lots of places to conquer. Maybe one of our I don't want to say biggest map to date, but it's pretty large. Very hefty. Pretty hefty. Um so we're we're just north of the Yellow River here. Hydration bot. Hydration bot. I actually left my water on the table over oh, there. Oh mate, I can't I can't let you go thirsty. <laughs> to be fair, I'm getting a bit of a headache. Um right, so an emperor must be of worthy. We could lineage. increase thank you very much, my friend. We could increase one of our um one of our buildings here. Oh, that's good. Sweet, sweet water. We could hmm. once again try and go for that. Uh, try and go for that minus four food production to get income, but we're pretty low on food right now, so we'll probably avoid that. But let's end our turn, and then we'll start replenishing our army and start moving on to Hene farmland here. So we're going to be taking on the yellow turbans. So we'll end our turn. I would ask this of you. South Sal. South Sal wants my guard. Which I don't really want to give it him. Not that so much I'm money. Reject, I'm afraid, my friend. Your choice. Sorry, Tao Tao. Go away. It's a non-aggression pact, not absolutely do me over in trades pacts. Uh, when is the game out? Seventh of March. Seventh of March. Twenty nineteen. This year. We've sent our character on assignment, so we've gotten this, and we've got our next mission, which is hey. to reach second marquee, which we've done. So we'll, we should uh, finish that next turn. But now we've got a mission. We need to destroy Han Fu. So this is basically. Um, oh. This is Path of Glory. So Path of Glory is kind of... Um, oh, have we got a Waffle fan in the chat? Big up Scoops. How you doing, my friend? Mm. You won. <laughs> um, Only shout out. <laughs> Hi, that's Oh, is that Santini? Do you know? Nice one, boys. So, um, so, yeah, Path of Glory are your missions which are going to take you uh, down the route of sort of history, basically. So Han Fu would have been taken out via... Um, by Yuan Shao in the story of the or the records of the Three Kingdoms, um, but then eventually, of course, you'll reach a point where um, you'll start diverging from history because you know 
Yuran Xiao was defeated by Cao Cao at one point. So, um, so once we get past that, we're going to start That's about making, start our, own making our own story. Our own history. Speaking of Han Fu, oh, wow. Han Fu's supplication. Although your borders are secure, your reserves have been strained by the countless volunteer warriors who rose to oppose the tyrant. One advisor suggests exploiting the tensions between Han Fu and Gongsun Zan to your benefit. Suggest to Han Fu that Gongsun Zan is eyeing his territory and propose a confederation. Gongsun Zan will be vexed, but we will benefit. He will so. be vexed. <laughs> Confederate with Han Fu is one option. We declare war. So Yuan Xiao and Gongsun Zan will go to war. So essentially. Well, us. Us. Yes. And we'll go with him. Ourselves and Gongsun Zan will be at war. In the process. Yeah, we'll get two, two buildings for free. We'll get Anping for free. As an act of treachery. Oh, right, cool. And it's the historical option, as it was told. Yeah. However, if we do not interfere, we keep our non aggression pact with Han Fu, and we gain a huge diplomatic bonus with Gongs and Zan. So there's something to gain from both options here. I'm seeing a lot of do the war in chat. <laughs> yeah, I mean, And also, as it was told, that's fine. Right? Let's confederate. We've gotten at least one, um, at least one non aggression pact, so we don't have to be too worried. Okay, we're going in. So we confederated Hanfu. You cared not for Gongsun Zan's opinion. He can rage as much as he likes. The opportunity to begin the unification of the North is far more important. Well, when you put it like that, the yeah. total unification of the North. Yeah, because of that, we've um, actually finished our immediately, uh, path immediately finished our uh, our mission. So we get even more yeah, income from peasantry. Oh, so, so much cash money is coming in. Yeah. Wait, we've gone down somewhat. Though. I think our salaries increased. That's why. And we've also got a bit of building income. Okay. Right. So. <laughs> Now we have the next next mission, which is to kill Gongsun Zan. So here we are. So we've annexed um, and Ping, which means that we're also going to get China his characters. So if we look, we wow. can see that our roster has gotten a lot bigger. So this is a good moment to tackle a bit of something that can happen to anyone really in this game. A lot of people going on, a lot of yeah. size, a lot of things. Do we necessarily need all those people? Yeah. Well, yeah, we could, we could. Oh, this is why our, yeah, yeah our salaries increased because we got so many more characters. Yeah, we've just taken on like seven guys. We've actually got Zhang He, which is he's a uh, a legendary character, which is pretty good. So he's probably gonna be quite nice to pick. What we can do is we can sort these guys via satisfaction as well. Useful. Yeah, so we can see that Han Rulan really? has developed a grudge against us. They're greatly aggrieved by the confederation um, of our two factions and the signing away of his freedom. Now, usually when you confederate She's another just faction, just take that yeah, we can definitely steal that. Usually, when you when you confederate another faction, um, you'll see uh, some of the characters will get really annoyed because they've lost their position in court. Yeah. So they've gone from a nice cushy job right in the in the faction council or as faction heir um, to being one of your lowly court nobles. You know, so we're going to see a huge grudge against us. That's going to give a minus fifty to our satisfaction. Do you know where, nasty. where she is going to probably end up? Spying and or fighting against us for someone else, uh, probably Gong Zan in the next yep. five to ten turns. So I'm pretty sure she's going to leave us. So let's just take away her ancillary <laughs> and uh, send her on her merry way. Where yeah. else we got? So obviously we've got. Is this another commander? Tamping itself. Yeah, Grand Chen is commandery. also pretty low. I might actually just relieve him of his services. Yep. Uh, Grand Chen. Release from service. Right it was him, wasn't it? Let me just check. Yeah. Yeah, quite sure. Yeah. Just being extra sure that I don't get rid of one of my good generals. Uh, so there's two options here. You can either banish, which will actually get some cash out of them, um, but we'll reduce satisfaction faction wide, or we can just literally just release there's them. No reason service. to banishing. Oof. Get banished. No. Banished. Get release them from service. G goodbye. Goodbye. Right, it's just a Ooh. formal, formal redundancy. Lu Bu has left Dong Zhuo's faction. Damn, son. We could hire Lu Bu. I think actually, to be fair, I think one of the devs mentioned that. Um, Oh, that Lubu's satisfaction yeah, had, had some kind of. Uh, so I don't want to cheat. But we'll just say he's an unhappy boy. He is an unhappy and boy. And he goes where he wants. Legends, you always do that. Yeah. You know, I've heard it's, uh, it's not great on CBS. Yeah, yeah, it's true. It's hard true. to manage. It's hard to manage. Um, Rogue. I'm not going to get Lubu because I, like, I feel like that's a bug that he's there. I don't want to cheat. So he is amazing, but I'm just going to leave him where he is. Later, let's play in other streams. Yeah, yeah. in other streams, we'll definitely get him. Addressing that. So we've got a few missions here. So uh, establish power, lineage begins lineage. So we need to. This one is to. Oh, that that should get finished next time. Okay, okay. So everyone else. Do we want to look at who? Uh, what other assignments have come available now? We've got so many colours. Uh, see if anything would help. And ping. Yeah, let's get another assignment at... slot, or are we, we should have two slots. Sweet. Oh, we've got, so we got three got slots actually. So we could really max out our efficiency. We don't want to send Han Rulan because. Uh, but Lady Lu. Yeah, Lady Lu. 
this is an, another farmland. This is the thing about this um, part of the world. There's a lot of farmland. Um, so there's there's not a lot of cash income unless you get the um, unless you get the uh, the building that we built, which yep. is to, to sell off that food for income. Yep. So they're not going to be your most profitable lands, but of course we're going to have loads of food. And food is very useful, especially for um, diplomacy. Yes. So you can sell off that food. Yeah, just because uh, you've got an abundance of something, and that's great with diplomacy. It's no longer just I have a lot. That's that yep. lot, and I am going to absolutely use it. To so it's now, fun. now that we've got this extra food income, I can actually buy another one of these yeah. food productions, yeah. and then we'll send, um, we'll send my wife off to uh, to do that peasantry camp again. So Don't we're going to need quite a lot of cash over the next 15 turns. So we've picked up a couple new armies now as well. So we've got our our main force over here, who I'm going to start moving towards Hene, and then actually let's yeah let's get the same militia that we wanted to get in the first place. Swap them out. We should probably die on turn two. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Do we want any more cash? Could do because we only have like one unit for sweeping. Do we maybe want a second one instead of four saber? These guys are quite expensive. We could possibly replace one, um, them. They're one six three. They are one of our best units though. Yeah. Well, two nineteen so, for that man, saber the, cavalry. The first two units of saber militia as well really re recruited quite high, and then we hit it's a low yeah, population. It's so when it's we, we uh, it's because we replaced as opposed to recruited. Oh, yeah. So right. I think we actually retrained some of the units. Um, so we've got a couple other characters here sitting around, but they're they're quite low strength. Attention. What I might do here is, um, for example, this guy. Your arrival is welcome, him, get a my bit lord. More income. There we go. And then we've just got the three, I think. So and so uh, and a whoop is a. Uh, oh, is it that one? Uh, no, sorry, Stevo the Outlaw mm -hmm. is asking why can't we appoint our own governors to oversee our command breeze? Well, we absolutely can. Yeah, hundred percent, we can. That is the point. We are we can admire administrators. Right now, we're just doing assignments. Yeah, we we haven't unlocked any administrator no. slots yet. Um, we have unlocked assignments. So you can get them why. for a few things. You can get them through technology mm -hmm. uh, or reforms, rather. So, for example, um, that one, unit secretaries, which will give us a uh, another administrator position. You can get them from ranking up your faction, of course. So once we hit marquee, we're going to get some um, some administrator slots. And you can also get them from things like ancillaries and skills and what have you. I so um, look out for those rule. in future turns. Basically, um, we'll start moving these two together. I'm going to combine them into one force. So, we'll move this guy over here. This is a very melee heavy um, force here. But we'll grab a couple more militia. Uh, yeah, cool. You're going, you're going heavy. Yeah, well, we're, we've, heavy. Got, we've got wars on all sides at the moment. <laughs> so, we definitely need to be careful. Um, thankfully, we've got a few non aggression packs. I might sign another one actually. With Shang Dang. What is on the uh, table? Gal Gan, actually. Let's see if he's up for one. That's minus two. We can make this work. We can we can do it for some food income. I reckon yeah, I reckon that's a fair deal. So we'll give Very him a bit well. of food and in return, non aggression pact. That works for me. Plenty. So now at least we've got um, and you can see them denoted by yellow here. You can see the um, they're neutral, but we put them on diplomatic status. And you can see the we're at war with the Han mm -hmm. on these these borders. We've also got the yellow turbans here, um, and then Gongsu Sand is up here. So at least we've secured these borders a little bit with those non-aggression packs to stop them to um, stop basically stop everyone dogpiling us. Yeah. yeah. So let's end our turn there. And move on. Nice, nice little foothold so far. A little bread basket going mm. on. A couple of armies. We would not characters. be your enemies. Everyone is after this guy. Yeah, he's, he's, an, he's a nice ancillary. Hot People are right now. Pretty, uh, pretty looking forward to it. Um, Fire by rank wants to see faction rank color. Yeah, as we as we expected, Henry Lan left, which is fine. Uh, that's fine. I think we can do that for can you. Can we turn off cat, cat faction colors? Is it in game settings? Interface? There it is. Alliance coloring off. There we um, go. There you go, guys. Now we've done a bit of both. Yeah, we've got plenty of battles upcoming, I reckon, so don't worry about that. Um, so Sheppy has joined our uh, available characters. Mm -hmm. um, and we've got our new communal grain farms. Excellent. Right, so. Law must now move. this guy's uh, getting a little bit more. My path yeah, is a little set. bit bigger force. Let's move into Hene and see. Yeah, they've actually left this undefended, which is good for us, so let's. Oh, oh, careful! He's in the water, though. He's in the yeah, water. Oh, I should have just gone for that one. Should have just gone for that one. Yeah. Can you not? Uh, he's out of range now. I did the old uh, switch. I was like, "Oh, come back!" Because <laughs> I just, I just saw that, and I was like, "Oh, but actually, to be fair, so we're gonna, oh, we can see a few Ooh. yellow turban units here. Uh, we've got reclaimers. We've got yellow turban spearmen. 
uh, men of the forest. This is what we were saying earlier. Like, you, you might not think they're uh, going to give you that much trouble. They're all better units than yeah. us. <laughs> That's going to be interesting. So he's trying to actually cross to support. Yes. Uh, so you can see dawn. the. So basically, you can you can travel across these rivers and you'll go pretty fast on them. Um, but you'll also see uh, these little river crossings where you can just walk across. Um, but the rivers are quite difficult to cross, as as you know was part a big part of um, of how it how it actually went down back in that time because a lot of the sort of late periods of the three kingdoms um, like the wars between Tao Cao's forces and the southern uh, Swen family and Liu Bei mm -hmm. um, that's where Red Cliff happened it's because Tao Cao literally just tried to cross the river with far superior forces but because they had such a strong um, just went on the other side, mate. Yeah, they went on the banks. Yeah, essentially they you up. the Yangtze. They had that locked down so much that you just couldn't get couldn't get any more southerly. So um, so the rivers are pretty important, and crossing them is going to be quite difficult. So if we do actually manage to take some of these units, uh, some of these towns rather, we'll get ourselves in a nice strong position because we've got a nice little border here. So even though Dong over here, Absolutely big Dong, uh, we can see that Huang Xiao is one of the legendary characters for the Yellow Turbans. He's quite close to us. So we normally would be a little bit scared of that, but because he's got that river to cross, it gives us a little bit more time. If he defends that city with archery masters as History well, we may have an issue. History yeah. Another little upgrade. Might as well. Might as well. A uh, bit more food progression. Yeah. A bit more income for peasantry. Tree. So these guys are actually... Are we, what, uh, what unit size are we on? Are we on just a normal... Standard? I don't know. <laughs> I think somebody I else think said it before we started. We're not on Ultra, I'm pretty sure. I have no idea. I don't think so. Oh. Honestly, I have no idea. Um, Satisfaction-wise, I think we're okay now. But most of these, most of these guys are looking okay. Um, I mean, our so wage budget is kind of standardised. We're about a grand down on where we were, so we could have a little less. We could maybe lighten a little bit more, but we've got two people on assignments. Then we'll want someone an administrator. So we'll keep going along, along, along. Ideally, our administrators want to be. Well, it depends on the kind of province. So, for example, yeah, um, green heavy on the well, for, for example, if we took a strategist, um, then they're pretty good. At, let me just find one of the administrators. Which one is it? There we go. So, so that's got a little oh. bit of food production, but we've also got reserves. Mm. Pardon me. We can bulk up every seed. Income massively. from industry is pretty nice. Income from commerce so with spice is pretty nice. So these guys are pretty good at making cash. Um, whereas, for example, your red characters might get a little bit more of a, um, a military uh, bonus to, to their military commanders. Which I'm going to need to find now. Yeah, so building up keep is pretty good. Um, and we'll also see... Some of them will be better at other things. Yeah, so for example, red characters maybe aren't the best for administrators because they don't have quite as many skills. But you can also load up on followers and with um, and with accessories as well. So you're, you're not necessarily uh, bound to just using certain characters. But certain people will be better at other things. So you can see that a couple of wars are kicking off now. Kongju and Sang Chao, which I believe is south of us here. So still going at each other. Oh, if you hover above the, uh, I think the season icon is there, it should tell us turn 8. Yeah, sure. turn 8. So if you... And obviously, you... It's turns now are not necessarily a year. A turn is a season, yeah. of which there are five Yes, year, which so is, a, is, is a historical detail. To say we're actually two turns, uh, or ten turns in, say, we're actually going to be two years yeah. into the campaign. This was not. We have that pretty easily. We've taken a nice uh, commander here under our control. And with that see that we're getting a nice chunk of land here so once I've taken Ping Yuan I think we're actually gonna have a pretty uh, pretty defensible position mm. uh, but as I said need to be careful need to be careful about that dong that dong's gonna get <laughs> gonna get dangerous there's a dangerous dong going on over there um, recruitment is a bit slowed down at the moment because we're in winter but I'll move up over Lord's here victory. could pop them oh we just ran out of that could pop them into reinforcement mode um, but Taiyun, they have an iron mine over here, which would be quite nice to take. And even if we don't uh, end up using it for ourselves, we could possibly trade it with Zheng Jiang, get her in our good books, maybe start a coalition. I, I have no problem with that one, to be yeah. honest. Yeah, Zheng Jiang is cool as hell. In fact, so I respect it. You could, uh, we could actually look at our quick deals. Um, we can form a coalition, so... Well, not maybe babies. Yeah, one of the nice things about the Uran brothers is that they can form um, military alliances and coalitions from the start of the game. So normally you have to get a certain faction rank before you can do that. So we could even 
try and reform the band. Get the boys back together. <laughs> reform the band. And so oh, it's minus 12.9 for Southside to join us, and we would have to give up like a regular payment of 729. So probably not the greatest just yet, but yeah, good stuff. So we, that's something that we can look into. Okay, so we could upgrade our town. Um, as you might have noticed, we've got population back, which is cool. Um, as that increases, we're going to see um, bigger bonuses. But if you start reaching your cap, we're going to see a lot of um, what's it called? Uh, public order debuffs, based on the fact that your your cities are overpopulated, overcrowded, essentially. Um, so you need to look out for that. Apparently, they can also migrate. So if you have room in other towns or cities in the same area, that's nice. It won't necessarily hit you straight away. If only if everywhere is maxed. Yeah. Otherwise, they'll actually migrate. I believe. I think it's the uh, it's the uh, adjacent commander. Yeah, yeah, isn't it? yeah. Yeah, they'll uh, they'll cross the border, seek work elsewhere. We've also got a position in our council here, oh, so council. we can name one of our characters as our chancellor, and by by having him as chancellor, we'll get public order across the board, faction wide income, peasantry again, good stuff. Um, and as well, they're going to be happy until rank 8, which is nice. So what we want to do here, I think, is we want to have a look at our satisfaction. Who's the most annoyed about yeah. their position right Desire now? For fire port position yeah, there. so we've got minus 12 here, minus 12, six. minus 6. Oof, minus 36 on, on yeah, Zhao this Dong is here is, is rank 4. So what we want to do is we want to put him in that position, I reckon. So congratulations on your promotion, Zhao Dong. That's going to increase his uh, his income a little bit, so his wage has gone up, as you can see. But he is now part of our council, so you can see he's very happy with his new job. Um, so the only guy that we need to worry about satisfaction-wise is Yan Liang at the moment. But if we open up the faction council now, we can actually get these guys to assign us missions. So oh, yes, invoking the council. Invoke the council. Ah, love that. So as we said, overpopulation. Um, so Zhao Dong would like us to see uh, one of our cities upgraded, uh, um, which would give us support from the merchants, which would increase our income from commerce, which isn't super great for us. We don't have any commerce buildings at the moment, uh, but it would give us a plus five satisfaction for strategists, which are pretty nice. Them, yeah, we've got a couple, literally Get a couple. To them. So. What we could do is what, I mean, how much we're, we're it's going to cost us three grand. What's which our what, what rate are we growing at as well? Forty-two so a turn. Forty-two thousand people a turn. Yeah, yeah okay, it's from yeah. our technology. Probably is worth dealing with this sooner rather than later. <laughs> Assuming direct control of the council <laughs> says uh, <laughs> foul staff. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, actually, let's. What we can do is we can open up our command trees tab here. We can see who's got the most population. So currently, Hene is the one with the the most, but they're actually a city already. I didn't realize this, that Hene is, is rank 5 settlement, which is pretty nice. So they've got a 1.5 million caps, so you don't need to worry about those guys too much. Plus, we physically can't afford 10,000 gold to upgrade that city. <laughs> Angry <laughs> Dentist says, oh my god, did he just spawn a mission? <laughs> damn right. <laughs> You're damn right we did. In fact, I think E Town is the only one that we can upgrade, so let's go with that. We'll finish our mission after five turns. Now, this is a new feature as well, by the way, um, instant construction. So you, if you've got a lot of cash and you're desperate for buildings, you can actually spend a lot of money to um, instantly build whatever you're looking for. Um, but Especially in the harder campaigns, yes. you might really need to get that foothold Yeah, fast. exactly. But to balance that, you can now only build one building at a time yep. per, per province. Per so, commandery. Um, per commandery, sorry. So there you go. Um, right. Let's see. So Chu Yu is actually ranked up, so we can give him some new skills. So we can either get Flaming Shot, uh, we can get chance of evading capture post battle, or we can get um, resolve as well as a new assignment. I think flaming shot is going to be a little bit more useful for us, the, the as well as that's, that's going to move us over to here, which is going to give us more range yeah, armor piercing yeah, damage and firing range. Sure. Really nice. For sure. As I said, we've already got range damage up, so yeah, this guy's becoming a bit of an archer pro, which is pretty good stuff. Do we need to? Have we got any spare followers, uh, accessories, or anything? Now we've folded in the other faction to us. Anything going on? Oh, we did get some new uh, discourse of the states. We give us an administrator position, which is pretty nice. Discourses of the states. It's currently on hand. Foo. Uh, Software changes are required. I'm not going to click on this this time because I know it'll, Windows will do some mischief to me. Ooh, ooh, um, but yeah, so this would give us an administrator position and authority, which is pretty nice. So I might actually remove that. From from Hanfu, give that to your own shell. Because he doesn't have an accessory right now. The administrator is going to only further stack what yes. we're aiming for. It's going to couple of our assignments. Increasing our authority, which is giving us more satisfaction, faction vibe, which is really nice. Um, there's, and there's no max on administrators, I don't think, is there? If you had items and you had them coming from our yeah, bank as long, as, stuff, as long as you've got the. Building, right? Yeah, the, as long as you've got the ancillaries and tech and whatever to, to upgrade, that, um, upgrade that number, then you can 
to keep going with it. I just saw an interesting question. Mm -hmm. Is there a max character rank? Because you've you've gone all ten, the I think. Ten. I think ten is ten. They, so they hit ten, and then that's that's the cap. Um, but that's like very high level. So that they'll they'll unlock their absolute best unit that they can have at rank eight. Mm -hmm. um, so rank ten characters are pretty lethal, and I think certain characters will start pretty high up. So I think Lupu actually starts at rank seven. So he's he's an absolute beast. Um, but eventually. You will see your other characters start to catch up. Also, you can, as I said, the, the <laughs> time of day, you can see all the lights coming on in the city. It's true. Nice. Defeat Windows 10. In <laughs> I wish we could, my friends. <laughs> I wish we could. We might do some recruitment. Oh, that tickled me. How do you That's feel about funny. that? Is some recruitment going? Yes. I mean, as long as it's not Spearman, I'm well happy to do it. Oh, I mean, it's probably going to Spearman. I can't see what they've got in here yet. I think I'll just leave them. Let's end the turn now. I'll leave them. Um, Replenishing, and then we'll see if we can move in and take that iron mine. So let's uh, come into Ooh, hello. hello. They're friend. still stuck on the river. Let and Empire are moving back into Bohai. The other turbines are suspiciously quiet, so the administrator should be able to now from that item transferring oh, damn. over. What's up for nutrition? Uh, low on military supplies. Yeah, let's move back into town. I think what we're going to have to do here is uh, camp. Camp. get our military Just supplies. Just camp in there. So the encamp stance giving, giving us plus not only military supplies. Not only defend one encampment inside the actual battle map, yep. but giving us our military supplies. Very yeah, so important to have military supplies when going on a battle. Yeah, Even after taking a city. Yes. Still need some because, yeah, because people won't like you. Not only that, if you look at faction support, faction support actually drops local military supplies as well. So basically, um, essentially the, the, the sort of law reason, I guess, behind faction support is that when you take over a town, um, we used to have it set up where uh, public order would um, take a hit because you've just taken over. Um, but essentially, that's not really true to life because it's, it's more of the fact that you know they're just peasants. So anyone that's remaining in that town probably wouldn't actually have any reason to to oppose you. Um, yeah, I think it's but, generalist, isn't it? Yeah, they wouldn't necessarily um, they wouldn't re necessarily be working at their full capacity. Because they've literally just been taken over by this new yeah, town. You've been unsettled, yeah, you might have evacuated. This exactly. job might have closed down. I exactly. got hit by a trebuchet. Exactly! Untrained Especially trebuchet when we're attacking everyone. Yeah, exactly! Who knows? What I might do is I might raise another character here in Hele. Let's just do another shout out uh, to the 600 odd following us on Steam. Hello! Hello! Welcome. Come and join us on yep. um, twitch.tv Twitch forward slash Total War Official, <laughs> where you can join in with us on the chat. Give us a follow as well. Um, by the way, and I'm, I'm going to use our, our little buttons here. Uh, we've got... Oh, no, that's our first. That's the wrong Oops. one. <laughs> uh, you can see that we've got plenty of streams coming up. So make sure you join us next week and the week after that. We'll be continuing our campaign. Uh, so give us a follow if you want to be notified when we go live. And remember, it is the Lunar Sale on it Steam. Is. And they're offering £5 off again, anything, any purchase over £30. Pounds, pounds. Which means, bam. This game, only 40 quid pre-order. Yeah. Well worth Good 200 stuff. plus hours you will take to devastate China. Turn it to your own. Back to the reform tree. Yeah, back to the reform tree <laughs> where it's nice and peaceful here. Um, so we've actually got the option to unlock a new unit here, which is G Infantry. So we can upgrade our crappy militia into proper infantry, which would be pretty nice. Oh, so I was literally I'm staring at that. Yes. Like, cool, so that will, that will give us a little bit more melee toughness, a bit more range toughness, which is good. Um, and probably a little bit more damage as well. No, it's strong. We've so got so many spearmen anyway. So, when, well, ah, right. Upgrades. Upgrades. Yes. I haven't got as far as upgrades of units so far. Is it simply buying the upgrade for the troop that you already Well, you just own? replace. You yeah, just yeah, replace right. like so you would with any other unit. Yeah, cool. yeah so that it's... At a cost? At the recruitment cost. Yes. Um, what's nice is as well is that if you were to... So say Yuan Xiao and I, I were to disband him. Um, I can't do it because he's in foreign territory at the moment. But if I was to disband him, then when you recruit a new army, uh, these guys will take their retinues with them and they'll retain their rank. So those guys will still... Basically, you're raising your bannermen again. Um, but it means that you'll pay a lot more when you recruit them. So they'll be super expensive when you get them back. But what's nice is you can get certain technologies. Uh, uh, certain technologies which decrease... Um, I think, for example, this one decrease redeployment costs. Redeployment cost. costs, yeah. I think so, attributes as well. As yeah, you can one. you can technically move your units around for a bit cheaper because yeah, because yeah, yeah, they will be actually cheaper than they would have been when you first recruited them. I feel a bit smart, a little bit clever, sneaky, a little bit clever. Well. There's a lot of ways you could tackle 3K. We still fine. need to choose a reform though. 
We keep, we keep growing. Yeah, I know. Just to see it happen. Oh, it's lovely. Do we do we want to yes. to grab these uh, these new infantry? We could also grab income from all sources, which is nice. Another I mean, administrative I can position. Make, I can make a poll, our first poll of the year, if you want. Oof. Or we can just we can just crack it. We could get another trade agreement. Also useful. Got which a lot of food. would be really nice. Got a lot of stuff. Another trade agreement would be good. If we were to go to diplomacy, let's see. Uh, how many people here have got available? Donk Draw's got one, but we're not going to get one from him. The Han Empire have loads, but also not going to get one from them. Yeah. I'd Would we sympathize with Xinjiang? She's not necessarily against us. Oh, we yeah. can't trade with her? No one's got any trade agreements available yet, so I don't think we can go for those yet. So, I'm yeah, I'm going to grab those G Militia. Let's do it. People are starting to get a little hungry for our next battle as well. So we'll get these upgrades. We're coming here. up against this large town here, which has... Uh, it's only got a small garrison here, but I feel like one of these towns has a Han Empire force. Um, also, those yellow turns, they weren't if they weren't stuck yeah, in the These, river, these guys are a little bit scary. Let's end the turn and see what happens. By the way, um, I'm going to point out a few things for people who are about to play this game coming up in hit, what, hit like a month. A month. What it's a month till it come out. So, this little button here is investigate issues. This is just going to reveal to you that, oh, look, we've got two people here who have general skill points available. And it's going to give us uh, high priority stuff in red and then low priority stuff in white. So, for example, we can see that one of our armies has low military uh, military supplies. Um, so that's really nice. The other one, and this one I think you might have touched on in your video. Yes, big time. Big time. Info overlay. The info overlay. There's a lot of things that have changed in Two Kingdoms. Yes. So you might be a bit confused at how they work. Give us a so, hover over one. hovering over this by pressing F1 will tell you how all of these things work, give you some more information, and they're contextual as well. So... Because we've opened up our character panel, we're going to get the information on that, which is really, really nice. Uh, and, that, and that's on every yeah. single Diplomacy, screen. Diplomacy, hover that over. Someone has painstakingly Good gone stuff. through <laughs> all of them. Yeah, you can see the administrator. Which is great. So any time, this yeah. is a great reference point. Yeah. It might not might not be a big read. You might just need to reference something. But the, the word that you need to pay attention to is bold. Yes. Skills, whatever. Attribute, something. Very useful to know. Nice. Very useful to know. Great point out, actually. Where so, were we in this? Your Antan is my heir. So if I get anything that affects <laughs> character, he's so happy, isn't so he? Happy. So happy. <laughs> if we get um, if we get this skill, for example, like I said, the redeployment cost will go down because he's yeah. Prime Minister, heir, or faction leader. Yeah. So another thing that I touched on in my Let's Play is that these three positions at the top of your court define your faction and your specific bonuses so your An Shao gives his own special bonuses but you'll also be able to stack onto those with your heir and your prime minister so your Antan might not be uh might not be in an army at the moment or anything like that but we could get an available assignment or we can get that redeployment cost as well which is really nice so i'm gonna grab the redeployment cost just in case which is pretty good lady liu my wife has also got a skill and, and i might go for might get that discipline to actually get a bit more damage just in case we bring her into battle. So there we go. Nice. 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 Yeah, make sure you follow so your name comes up on screen because Tom's just moved it for you. Um, see it attached to a horse. So we've also got an available administrator position, as we said. So let's have a look at some of the things that we can get. So I think the one with the most bonuses is probably Wen Chu. So this would make him happy until rank four, which is good. Mm. Um, we would also get plus 20% income from all sources, minus 100% corruption, more reserves, and more population growth, which is pretty good. So let's put him in that position, and then we choose a, uh, a place to deploy him in. So we're currently making our most money out of E. Yeah. So I'm going to confirm that. We can yeah. Make him the administrator of E. So administrators um, don't have to necessarily be in the place that they're administering. So Wen Chu is over here. But if I were to undeploy Wen Chu, he would become a free member of the garrison, which is really nice. So you'd be able to see his retinue in the garrison, which is pretty cool. So if you make someone an administrator um, and they've got a pretty hefty garrison, maybe it's a bit expensive and you need to defend a settlement, they'll actually be there for free, which is really Great good. Great for, for any type of linchpin in a commandery yeah. uh, to know it's happening. And obviously that assignment is happening over the top as well. Yeah, we can also we can see that if we give him certain accessories, for example, maybe... I don't have any. But, um, for example, you might have an accessory which in increases effectiveness as an administrator as well. Which is pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, so I think we can end our turn there. Ping, 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 ping,
I reckon those yellow, yeah, those yellow turbans are amassing strength there. Them that that three lot together, characters at once. That lot together. That's he's got an army in the city as well. That's yeah. no small battle to take on. But let's paint. Let's take Ping around. Yeah, I reckon they've consolidated their pieces in here. But what I want to do is I want to take the salt mine. Salt mines are pretty good because they give you industrial income. You can see that the AI started building towards that, so increasing their industry income. Uh, there's a couple of things here which will increase the percentage wise as well. I think industry is the hardest, um, hardest income to give percentage wise. Uh, commerce is quite easy to to increase percentage wise okay. but as you get into sort of later game um, buildings so for example you need to have town rank four here to get this artisan workshop that will start increasing the industry but it also does a big increase of commerce so so we can get some cash from there as well so communal, communal workshops might be a nice thing to grab we've also got a spy position available I've just noticed tempting Ooh. tempting can any of these guys spy for us uh, so these would be new recruits, so I'd have to grab someone else in because I don't think. think oh, what's oh, Zhao Dong is willing boy, to spy. A chancellor. But be yeah, because he's in my court, he can't spy now because he's, he holds a position in my council. So, where do we want to spy? Is our is our question. I mean, Gong Zanzan is now specifically an enemy. Yeah. Dong Zhou is always useful to know the strings he's pulling of the puppet emperor. Is there anyone close to home that's useful to spy on? If not, anyone want to turn over? It depends. Long-term spying game, short-term spying game. I think going to sand for now. I think I, that's that's, that's a, a move, right? No, bear in mind this guy's only rank two, so you might not actually hire him. So if he does come back, then we can always send him to another faction. Pre Previous worth. Yeah, but he's so he's going to start moving that, out now. We haven't got anyone that can directly spy for us, as it's shown yeah. by the grayed-out eye position. So what we have done is given him a new character in his court to try and potentially allow him to take him on. Yeah. Sweet. Sweet. Okay, so. Uh, we've got Clay Rat, which is nice. A little bit of satisfaction. And Wenchu just ranked up after that uh, sieging of the small town. So, because he's an administrator now, I can actually give him the skill, which increases income from industry. Excellent. However, the place he's administrating doesn't have any industry nope. income, so <laughs> not very useful. But we could get 25% income from peasantry. Very, very nice. And you can see our cash inflow should be increasing as he takes we're, over. We're balancing out at 1700 and we're, we're holding on a lot more troops and yep. men. Would that okay, have uh, that These guys get upgrade their supplies for back as well the now. spearmen be available now? Yeah, so now now that we've actually I'm taken over this place, we can start replacing these guys. Right? So we can get our G infantry. So Excellent. Actually, now that he's ranked 3 as well, we've got uh, spear the spear guards unlocked. So. And so what's the difference between these two? So one is anti-cavalry uh, with good missile defense because of a big old shield, mm -hmm. uh, where these guys are actually more of an all-rounder. Both have the same yeah. one formation available to them at the so moment. The spear, the spear guard are a little bit slower, but they've got a lot more melee toughness, a lot more morale. Um, but they're going to do less damage. Mm -hmm. So so the G infantry have 20 more damage than the others. Um, so what we'll do is, I think Wait, we'll actually... What are those guys as well? Oh, they are special. These are, these are my special warriors yeah. of you, yeah. So what I'll do is I'll grab a mix of the two, I think. So, yes. we'll, so we'll replace these guys with... Ooh. Running out of money though. It's all right. That's fine. We got one. We got one. Let's end our turn and get some income. We could always. We would be uh, no oh. threat to you. Hello, Kong Rong. Ah, <laughs> you devil. Food the people's income. eyebrow. He wants food. Actually, I was just going to suggest this. He wants food and an ancillary. Only for an aggression pack. Not really? an aggression pack. It's five point seven. How? It's not that powerful. He reckons he's a bit tougher than, uh, than us. He's rich in yeah. money. He's poor in food. We are rich in food and poor in money. That's why he's asking us for food. I mean, we could get rid of that non-aggression pact and just ask straight up for money. So we, can get our oh, we could have got a trade money. agreement with him, actually. Which would have been nice. Um, Next reform, we could open up a second one. But for the moment... He wants to form a coalition. No, no, he really doesn't. <laughs> when we get, get rid of the non-aggression pact and see if we could just ask for straight up funds, get all the spearmen made paid for, I should say. How much money can we get a turn? Let's have a look. Ooh. So we could get 226 a turn for four food. We're making 20 right now. For 10 turns. What if we give more food than that? Cool. We can easily afford that. Two for four. No, I don't think that's worth it. I don't think that's worth it. We withdraw, we withdraw it then. then. He's going to have a massive trade influence, though. Isn't he he is, yeah. It's always going to be excellent for him. We're going to we're going to need to um, we're going to need to up our trade agreements, I reckon. We'll also address this yellow turban threat mounting on the other banks of the river. Mm. In 
interesting drill master. Oh, nice. Yeah, so random events will happen for your characters as well as so they do cool things. So this general demands a high level of discipline from their troops to match their own. Each morning, their troops are woken for a 10 lee training run before breakfast. Any stragglers are penalized by having to do an extra lee the following day. So when Chu is actually going to get um, plus one starting rank for recruiting his army and experience per season for uh, for the next five turns, which is nice. So, which is pretty useful to be honest, because we're getting into new recruits by uh, by replacing. So let's grab a couple of these spear guard, and then we'll get two G infantry as well. Nice. So he was asked earlier mm -hmm. um, about multiplayer usage. Uh -oh. Obviously, we uh, do the usual head-to-head -head and so on. Um, and it was basically asking, can you still take over the enemy armies as usual? Give yep. your opponent loads of crap? Yep. Yes, you can. Of course you can. Absolutely can. Uh, and can you give your own units to uh, your mate if he's spectating so you can both have uh, a little bit of fun with them as well? Yes, you can. Delightful. Not a problem to you. So, same as usual there. Thanks very much to Alan in QA for some Thanks, Alan. Thanks, Alan. Is that Alan Silliman? Yes, it is. <laughs> what a lad. Right, so we've got a few more. I'm just going to move into this territory. We'll probably have to run back out because they've got too much there. But I just want to see what they have. So they've got... Oh, they've actually got Lance Heavy. Cavalry. They're pretty, they're pretty nice. Uh, and then the tie in the garrison itself. Oh, they're pretty well defended Portion. up there. I take it. I might go for that small town instead Nothing because then we've actually got our... Oh, I just trespassed. That was stupid. Because uh, then we've got a bit more of a border with Kong Sinsan. We can start moving into his territory as well. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah, I didn't mean to stress past that. That was dumb. And I must have counsel. Just recruiting the new units, but we'll take that salt mine soon. Which should give us some industry income. No. These guys is what I'm worried about. No. I reckon they're about to cross the river, which is pretty nasty. But we'll see what happens. Uh, De dead like Medge. Uh, just uh oh. It's cool three kingdoms doesn't mean you necessarily have to have everything be rotated around the number three. <laughs> so, uh, Jordan. <laughs> uh, mm, Ooh. Oh, has declared war. Just give, give him one ancillary. That is <sighs> overly strong as a reaction. We had an aggression pact as well. The treacherous bastard. Tao Tao. Tao Tao. Tao Tao. You bastard. Yuan Xiao, my friend. Yeah. Leader of yeah. the coalition. Yeah, great. Screw you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm breaking up the band as of right now. Oh, here they come. Okay. Oh, God. And we're taking attrition as well. Oh, God. This is bad. Where's right. the big army? So they've got a scholar. So a scholar is excels at engaging enemy heroes. That's bad. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, and Philosopher. then they've also got a, be a veteran who is susceptible to arm pissing damage. Oh, God. And they've right. got Master Bowman. Horse, archers, good archery masters, clubbers, yeah, oh they've got everything. We do have our garrison, which is pretty beat up still. Yeah, cool. this see, this is why I put this army here, because I was expecting them to cross the river. Well, I mean, if you pull this off, you'll pull something. If you don't, then don't worry about it, it's fine. If we have to, we can pull your own shell back. Bigged up the yellow turbans already, yeah. right? So it's fine. We'll see what happens. 700 we'll see what happens. versus uh, 922 this is more than points out in the it is out of heaven. So that's our fine. Our only option is victory. <sighs> see it our done. only option is victory. I mean... Great. Yeah. Good. See it done. Excellent. Short campaign incoming. <laughs> Still in strategy. No, no, that's when I'm playing. Yeah. Wheels, Wheels has got past turn five. We're already doing great. Uh, Wheels, my daughter wants you to grow a greater beard. It's not long enough. It's not it? long enough. Oh my God. Right there. Jeez. Oh, a good couple of inches going yeah, on. Yeah, there. No, comb pretty, every pretty morning hefty. as well. Maybe that would satisfy it. So here we are in our minor settlement, and this is looking lovely actually. This is one of our farmland minor settlements. Um, yeah, that's beautiful. Ooh, a little bit of, a, a bit of wheel scarring there. So this has got quite a few interesting little, uh, little yeah, narrow, narrow uh, passageways. So they've got three sides. unique units here. You can see they've got their gold border. Um, and then they've also got some, some standard warriors. This is our scholar, and the scholar was the one who was good engaging at enemy heroes. Good. Okay, so in that case, I think what we want to do, let's get our cab over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split my forces up. I'm just going to have my not my not my captain, but just my G militia. I'm going to try and hold over here. There's much militia over there as well. My <laughs> 35 saving militia. See what they can do, but um, we're gonna try and focus down the character who's a little bit easier to kill. 
Um, but yeah, we'll see. Way less ranged on this side as well. We're yeah, gonna exactly. blob up on this side, so if we could focus our range, um, we have yeah. one. one. Yeah, we have one. Uh, oh, you know, I'll be quiet actually, don't worry about that. You've got this handle, man. <laughs> so do you. <laughs> Tell All him. good, buddy. <laughs> Uh, so he's got a uh, passive rush, his final rush. That's oh, good. That's not good because that only occurs after the battle has already been decided. Great. So essentially, he just. You can use him to snipe down enemy heroes who are trying to run away. Oh, actually, to be fair, that is quite cool. Prepare. That is cool, but not, not useful right now. Okay, so we've got two units of cap who are basically going to be our MVPs here. We really, really need to look after them. Surely, they need to be sweepers. Right. No, no, sorry, son. Back seat, a passenger seat. We're, we're, we're gonna push out. We're gonna push out, try and get to him. Do that. These guys are just gonna have to hold for as long as possible. But whilst we're, whilst we're pushing out, we're gonna try and rush these guys, siphon back round. Yes. Hopefully, uh, yes. use our lack of uh, or our massive numbers, which we don't. Have. So. Comrade is being attacked. He's high. He's threat high. He's rank two. Yeah, yeah he's rank two. He's got Big charge here. Big charge. Oh, get hit. We'll, we'll see how much damage this does. So I'm going to grab one of my spear guards to go into my spear guard to go into the charge as well. Can't get us my problem here is that these saving militia are super low strength. Yeah, they come to Cav. Cav are going to be the going to be the big, big, big thing that we need to. I will crush you for this insult! Charges. The then cycle come. charges. Yeah, you're all happy now. Get into the battle. This is going to be a good one to turn over, that's for sure. Yeah, so there you go. We don't have the alliance colors on anymore, so uh, your anti has that nice burnt orange. Oh, God. Peel one of the match up. So it's there. Yeah, it's just, it's just, let's just let those guys go after that. Crash into the back of the warriors. Try and break them and wow, it's going to be our friend here, big time. Oh, <laughs> big charge. Pull them out. That, oh, they really didn't like that. Yeah, they really didn't like that. Big time here. So we're actually winning that battle against the enemy heroes go, which is really good for us. It's really, really good for us. They charge into the back of these peasants spin, and they're just peasants. So we down. We haven't turned around, so we should just get this charge. We didn't have much of a strong formation in yeah, they're, they're routing as well. The there, damn, that's it, that's the route, that's the route. Let's no, go no, off that channel. Let's go off that channel. Okay, okay. Let's go off that channel. Yeah, archers are firing in combat. Oh my god. Fair play for them, that's impressive. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna bum rush Gwen High here. You're whining. Oh, you're winning. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you're whining, Wales. I'm not whining. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm guessing over here. Yeah, everything's gone to pot. So that's fine. We so basically literally just left them to to try and buy time. That's cool. Crash into the side of the other warriors. Best archers ever. These archery masters are really giving me a run for my money. Almost taken out Grand High, and then we can start moving back in. Although we've got this. Ooh, they're actually exposed. Yeah, they're splitting up a little bit. They're going for the middle point, though. This is mainly range. Oh, God, yeah, no, they are. So we do need to get back in. Yeah, so this this capture point isn't going to win them the battle, but it's going to give us a massive morale. They're all pretty much done. Just kill that champion. I think this is a smart play. I like it, we'll go on the less range heavy side. The oh, there he goes. Ah, there, right, move in now. Move in. I wonder if we can try and charge down this channel as well. They're not exposed. going for the middle though, that's good. We've got some spears just yeah. coming in here as well. Just Only a peasant spearman. But yeah, I don't think they're top priority right now. No. We need to make sure that we take out those those archers as well. Once we take out their range, like they're pretty thin on the ground. Oh, the cool. thing I'm most scared about is Tong Liang. Because yeah, she's... Uh, She's actually pretty good at attacking units. Uh, we've got enough cat. We've got 51 riders still active. If yeah. those can get into the back of those archers, then we'll I think my main issue now is that I'm going to have to like march throughout the entire settlement. We're going to get pretty tired. But hopefully we can get a nice charge in. These are chanters, these guys. They're pretty cool. They've got massive clubs, which is quite cool. I like that. Oh, they don't like that, though, do they? They don't like that. Yeah, so I don't know the uh, the yellow turban warriors yet. We haven't had a chance to play them yet, have we? 
Um, but we're going to have gameplay for them before release, of course. Oh, they're actually taking that point. I don't know. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. God. Do I want to take that? Or do I want to take out these warriors? Take the warriors out. Pick your targets. Pick your targets. You've got to get near them, though. Like, they're halfway to the game, mate. Big charge into the side. Oh, brace. Oh, they didn't get quite as much damage as I wanted to. I don't want to waste um, my cab here. You can loop them around, though. Exposed archer unit right there. Oh, there is an exposed archer unit right there. They're trying to get, right, they're trying to get around on you. You send your hero in. Oh, these guys, the these guys are split up. I don't like that. It's just, it's just. Oh, are here. they charging? Have they run out of ammo? Yes, they have run out of ammo. Okay, brace, brace, brace. Oh, oh, god! <laughs> <laughs> no! Ah! All right, we do have spear units there, so hopefully they can do a little bit more damage. We've got our other demolition coming in as well. Um, oh, my champ actually took these guys out pretty well. Um, he's doing a bit of damage. To them. How long can they hold that for? Before we lose? Uh, we won't lose because of the point. It will just take a morality buff, which, when we're already a little bit outnumbered, isn't great for us. Uh, They're starting to. We might actually win this, you know. Let's take these guys, loop round. Might be worth putting our heroes into it. Just contest. These guys are annoying me a lot. Yeah, I'm hoping that if this. Yeah, she's losing, right? So she's a bit more like a champ, where. Um, She'll be good at taking other heroes, Look, but won't runs. do quite as well against uh, large units. And we've actually managed to route these boys, which means we can get around the back here. Oh, they're starting to route. That's it. That's the one. Big win. Woo! Big win. That was well played. See you later. That was well played. So, yeah, because he's, got, because he's got this final rush ability now, he gets super fast. So we can charge after this character and try and kill her off. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Look at that. Meown. <laughs> 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 And we will do that, I think, actually. It'll be worth taking her down, as they had so many people over there. Yeah, they had a lot of uh, characters. I'm surprised they tried, decided to cross them. I think they just tried to get a rush on us. To be fair, like they should have won that battle. But, um, Didn't should have deployed the, all the range on us. Well, I guess, no, They the, the advantage is we get to see where they're deployed, and we chose to go yes. away from their range. Yeah, yeah. The That's the nice story. thing about being a defender. Those first two big cavalry charges into the back there. Really, we use morale as the winning factor there, yeah. not necessarily strength of arms, which is... Awesome. Big, big G's right. from the chat, mate. Big G's. I'm going to fast forward this, make sure that we kill her. Now that's super speedy mode. I want him to be this fast without the fast forward on. That's what I want. <laughs> the fastest man in all of China. Come on. There we go. Oh, she's got a lot of health, hasn't she? The enemy there general we go. is falling. Get rid. No See you later, love. Excellent. Let's claim a victory. Excellent. Close victory. Enough with truck. So those master archers. I mean, the unit that did engage. <laughs> Thousand sap man. Eighty-eight. Solid. Solid. They could have hit us with a lot more there. Yep. We got a bit lucky. Hopefully that puts them into disarray a little bit, and we can take that salt mine, and maybe come down the river and start taking it off. And you will be I'd really like to kill these yellow servants off because they're just going to be a continuous form in our side. So they've uh, they've had to replace this character now, because when a when a character dies, um, you can replace him with another character in your faction, and they'll keep that retinue, which is quite nice. Our spy has been dispatched, Johnson Zan's faction. Hopefully he uh, hopefully he picks him. Someone asked earlier. Yeah. Uh, do characters have permadeath? And I think that is a romance mode, classic mode differentiation, isn't it? So. There's two things that can happen to you after you after you get defeated in combat. You can either get wounded, um, or you can just get killed, right? So if you're just a standard character, like for example, if it's just like you know, Lady Liu or whatever, if she if she were to die in combat, she would die because she didn't have any wounds. However, Yuan Shao here has resilience because he's a special character, which basically means that they can take a couple of hits before they go. Mm. So the big name characters will stick around a lot easier. So what about if one of our big name characters got captured after a battle? And if you get executed, you're dead straight up. You can't, you can't survive that. Also, if you die in a duel, which is a life or death situation, then you're dead because you, you died in a duel. I think that's all fair. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and obviously, um, in romance mode, characters can live a little bit longer than they can in records, and they'll also, I think, you have 
less likelihood of having uh, of wounds or lives, as someone put in chat. Um, so yeah, romance mode will be a little bit more, little bit more historically I'm accurate. Fine out, there are five seasons Restore in the Chinese in this game. We go for a spring, yes, spring, summer, wins. harvest, autumn, Charge, winter. On, That's right. Bam, there it is. Yeah. Right, so I've taken this town now. So what we can do is, I'll start, um, I'll start moving my secondary army over here. Oh, oh, I might have to try and take this guys out. They've got us again. Ah, so this is interesting. Just highlight these red units Well, yeah, because they're convalescing, so it means basically they're not actually... They don't exist yet. It's going to take two turns before they can regather their strength. So we've got them weak for a little we've, while. We've literally just got our cap no. against all enough. of that. Well, mm, I say it's not enough. Is it not enough? The they've got an awful strength character. character. I think what we want to we do... We need someone. Yeah, we need to bring another boy in, don't we? Not really rangers if... Possible Could we get a sentinel in? We haven't, we haven't had a sentinel yet. We'd have to recruit. Band here though. Oh, so, I mean, ah. or six retiny bands, so we could pay a little bit more. This is actually using some of our legacy costs though, see there? Uh, lineage, sorry, lineage, yeah. So basically when we recruit a new character, when you're playing as your own shout, and you can see the booze back again. Uh, when, we, when we're when we playing as your own shout, we'll actually spend um, our lineage to recruit. Normally it's, it's about a thousand gold, I think. Um, so if we were to grab on these guys, this basically means that these guys aren't actually part of our faction. But yeah, that's kind of nice, having a, a oh, full yeah. roster mean, already. That's very big. Oh, that they're archers. Do I want... Oh, I suppose, to be fair, like, sentinels do have a couple of bonuses to archers. Yeah, they do. And, like, some axe bands that will do yeah, well. Yeah, axe bands are pretty decent. Yeah, let's grab. Let's grab. Okay. Okay, welcome to the force. Welcome to the force, Mr. Gongqian. So, we'll grab you... Oh, he's, he can actually get these Shen Sword Guard, which is pretty good as well. Medium as well. In, could we, instead of convalescing them, could we replace, take them out of his retinue and put I them think into I'd, his? I think I'd rather wait a turn and get get a nice strength unit back, so that if this guy does come back at us, then we can at least have something in the town. To be fair, we just fended them off. There's no rush. We're all yeah. cool. What time are we on to today? Five or six? Uh, oh god, we're finishing in six minutes! That's how it's oh like. my goodness! <laughs> this is rushed that? by. <laughs> this is absolutely sped by. Uh, so we've secured Ping Yuan. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed the stream. Um, obviously, we're just showing you the early game here, so... It's been pretty chill so far, but once all these border wars start kicking off, especially with Tao Sao getting his, uh, getting his claws into us nice and early, we're going to have a lot of stuff to kick off. You can join us, of course, next week um, on February the 13th, where we'll be kicking off at the same time, 3pm, and then the week after that. So we're going to be carrying on with the same campaign, um, continuing with, with, uh, with the same characters and everything like that oh, it made a good so day. yeah so we'll, we'll, we'll kick off with it we've done about 12 turns here but we've got a lot of stuff to talk about so don't worry about it we've got plenty of plenty of stuff to do so far. Uh, remember to take safe <laughs> while i'm thinking yeah. about it yeah it's a good idea <laughs> we'll end the turn and uh let's one more plug as well remember it's the steam lunar sale right now yes. so if you want to grab this game for five pounds off then please do pre-order now we're out march 7th mm -hmm. 2019 uh, it's going to be excellent. We're all very excited. Oh, and we're only going to be seeing more actually. streaming content. Yeah. Building up to that day. Some fun actually, things uh, in store. Do you want to shout out any uh, tabletop as well? Yeah, we'll be back with Tabletop Tuesday next week where we're playing Game of Thrones, yes. the board game, which you we, still need to teach. We need to go yeah, learn. we need to go and learn how to play <laughs> the game. Sat there, right there, <laughs> waiting for us. Um, but I yeah, asked Tyler about it today. We've got plenty of streams coming up, yep. and towards the end of the month, of course, we'll probably start looking at maybe even upping the the streams to every single day mm. as well so make sure you pay attention Probably to that fun stuff on social somehow yep. Insta maybe I can see White that. Fang in chat is asking us to play Keyforge again because yeah. it's what we played last night if, you, if you've missed any of these streams or if you want to maybe you joined us halfway for this head on over to Total War Live on YouTube uh, which is where we post all of our VODs and uh, we will see you then um, we'll just kick back into full screen mode. screen mode yeah uh -huh. so thank you very much for watching um, pleasure. Rushed yeah. by. Rushed by. First Absolutely sped by. Year. To be fair, maybe we should. Maybe we can do another turn. We still got five minutes. Let's do another turn. I don't want to. I don't want to. Bonus content. Already. Bonus turn. What? Bonus turn. What? Here we go. Here we go. All right. Let's keep this up. We've got these boys back. I cannot. Yeah. Let's charge into the back of these boys before they reach across the river. Yeah. Make sure they don't come back. <laughs> One more turn. One more turn. If there's anyone you want to see us play as well, oh, we've actually captured a character. Oh. Um, we can get an ancillary from him, Clay Rat, by executing him. So, nice, nice little thing to finish up on. Um, when we see, um, 
when we see uh, characters captured in the battle, mm. we're going to be able to have three uh, options here. We can't employ him because he's a yellow turban, so he would never join a noble um, because he sort of stands against everything that we stand for. We've captured both characters, so we can actually execute both of these guys. Normally, we'd see a penalty to, to the friends of them, but actually, the only person that we need to worry about is uh, this guy here who's a rival of Cheng Ning. So we can just kill them both no off. More. Goodbye. We don't have to worry about them at all. We'll so you can see they'll get deleted now. They're gone. So the only force that no. Yellow Terms have left is Huang Xiao himself. So we can move up after these, um, these hand empathies as well. Make sure they don't come at us. We can. Get rid of those. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. <laughs> so a cool and savage in chat. Murdering both of them. Ooh, see now, this guy that we've captured, we can actually employ into our services. He's only level one. He's greedy, which is pretty bad because we're gonna see um, a lot of uh, a lot of treacherous nature from him. He's quite brilliant though, but will also increase his ambition to gain independence. Uh, but he's also cheerful, which will give a little bit of satisfaction. I'm not too keen on I'll him. I'll vote release. Let's get some cash. Yeah. We'll just release him back to the faction get some cash money. So I think the, 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 the point to be made is that we Wait, execute yellow turbans because there's nothing to be lost from executing yeah. them, whereas usually with everyone else, there will be long running ex yeah. uh, consequences but from that. So if we actually go to um, if we go to the yellow turbans in diplomacy now. Oops. That's not diplomacy. You can see. A waste of time. Oh no, we want Huang Xiao doing, sorry. Oh, yeah, we can see as we you. hover over this, war atrocities against us. You can see we've got minus 69 from it because we murdered two of their, two of their uh, characters. Atrocities! Atrocities. Not bad words coming out. Whereas we go to the Han Empire and we hover over it, we can see that released our generals is giving us plus 20 to relations as well. So, so by, by treating factions well in battle and showing how honourable you are, you can sort of heal the wounds that you have. Mm -hmm. Uh, buildings built, complete our mission, and ooh, classic of filial piety. Can you give us plus 10 satisfaction, plus 6 cunning, which is pretty nice. Might give that to, um, yeah, we can give that to this guy here. So that's going to increase his, uh, the amount of ammunition that he brings, and the military supplies for the army as well, which is really nice. We've still got that guard. Oh, didn't I put that on? Yeah, put that. There we go. So, um, I wonder if there are any weapons. Oh, we do have... Ah, oh, that's your Shao's. That's fine. I'm just nattering now. Uh, your Anshao is leveled up as well, so we can get a new skill. So, redeployment cost. Might you not back? We can get ignore forest penalty on our own route, so we can move through uh, the trees faster. And we also get an increase of uh, chance of avoiding the ambush. Also, ten authority is pretty damn good. Enables night battles when commanding. Also that's very good. I'm actually, night battles would be very useful. Let's grab that. Really like that skill. Starting to look forward to the next week, yeah. right? There we go. Um, we've also got space to build something here in Ping Yuan. And as I said, we've got our, our Brine Spring here. You can leave us Prestige, Income from Ministry. Let's give that an upgrade as well. Yeah, so like we'll leave it here. We'll, we'll do a save. Live. Save. Live saving. Live. Your Anshi Hour campaign. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. I have been Mr. Wheels Whelan. I've been joined by the illustrious Mr. Jordan Wheeler. Wright. Um, <laughs> shout out to Tom Hawkins on the production desk who's been helping us out with, uh, with little bits. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you next week for some more Total War Three Kingdoms gameplay. Same time, 3 p.m. on Wednesday, GMT. Uh, just, show you, just show you those again. So those are all the dates there. Make sure you join us next week. And, of course, we'll be back on Tuesday as well for Tabletop Tuesday where we're playing Game of Thrones. Oh, us Game two will be back. Thrones. Yeah, the two That's of us. That's going to be heavy. That's going to be very, very fun. Excellent. I haven't screwed up a board game in ages. Good. It's about damn time, isn't it? Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you soon. And remember, <laughs> see you soon.